This podcast is brought to you by JList.com. It's a Kit Kat bonanza over at JList and JBox.com. We all know that Japan is famous for having so many different unique and fun flavors of Kit Kats to choose from. And JList and JBox have a large variety of these, most at only $4.50 per bag. Some flavors include the Sake Kit Kat, Umeshu, Nuts and Cranberry, Rum and Raisin, Probably the most popular, the green tea Kit Kat. That's my favorite. Yokohama strawberry, Mount Fuji strawberry, Hiroshima Momiji flavor, Amau premium strawberry, Benny Emo purple sweet potato, and so many other flavors over at JList and JBox.com. Head over there, and while you're there, you can browse their selection of anime figures, games, and other merchandise, and you'll be supporting the podcast. And now, it's time to start the show. You're listening to the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. Take your anime addiction to the next level at aaapodcast.com slash join. And now, here are your anime addicts. Hi guys, welcome. For a second there, the music got really loud. I was like, oh, what is happening? <laughs> welcome to the 520th episode of the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast. We're dedicated to making your anime addiction worse. So much I... worse! So, so much worse. <laughs> I am Mandy. I am one host of four. And uh, let's take a second to introduce everybody. First, we have Mitz. Hello. Mitz here. Sipping on a water. Mason would be so proud. I am so proud. I also have water. Oh my goodness. Hydro homies assemble. In my fine double metallic insulated water thermos, able to not freeze up to temperatures well below zero Fahrenheit. Okay. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> we also have Enzo. Hello. What's up, fam? I'm back, and this time I got an Oreo. Here we go. For the oh, we're back on the Oreo train. Here we go. We go. Is, Is it a good? perfect split? Not oh, that's perfect. Bad. That's Not bad. even okay. close. Right. Well, anyway, <laughs> what's up, everyone? I'm here. <laughs> He's rusty. He's rusty. I'm rusty. I'm rusty. I'm rusty. <laughs> And last but not least, we have Mason. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, Mitz was talking about the all the Kit Kats in that like intro ad, and there's Yokohama strawberry and Mount Fuji strawberry. Hell Never yeah. more in my life do I want to know the difference between the two. Mm. Buy them, my friend, and and sample to your palate's delight. On the podcast. That'd be On good. the podcast. That's right. Of course. <laughs> All righty, so today we have a lot of stuff coming up. First of all, you can join us. If you'd like to join the Anime Addicts Anonymous podcast, go to aaapodcast.com slash join. You can create an account there and sign up and you can get bonus content. We have so much stuff going on for you. We have hentai episodes, hobby addict episodes, upper, F, F, upper parties, after mm-hmm. party mm-hmm. episodes. Hobby addicts today, we talked about more Final Fantasy seven remake animal crossing tattoos all kinds of shit so uh join up you can get all the bonus stuff and um right now for april we're doing hobby addicts right for for we're giving those out for free oh so free it doesn't get freer than zero super free (laughs) so yeah you can also get all that stuff so join us on itunes just follow us there and um any uh, any of the other podcast apps and uh, social media join us on twitch so you can get updates on when we are streaming just follow us there and facebook we have we still have our groups going on which is updated all the time by our social media person caroline and uh, the groups is a podcast uh slash groups at facebook and then on discord you can find a link to discord on our website to join up there and that's where all this stuff is happening. We mm-hmm. have so many clubs for you to join. Mm-hmm. What's going on in clubs? Oh, we the two clubs I want to talk about. We have our seasonal watch party club, which is Saturday nights at about nine thirty EST, where we watch a bunch of shows from the new season. The lineup was decided by viewers like you, and we're watching Kakushigoto, Wave Listen to Me, Hamefura, Kaguya Season Two, and Art. So come to Discord. It's very simple. 
You just go to the Game & Watch Party organization thing, and you say, I want to be a cool kid. And we say, okay, we'll let you in. And you mm-hmm. get to hang out with us. And we uh, watch shows and gaff and goof and guffaw and laugh, and it's a good time. We also have Anime Club, which is every two weeks we watch a full show, and then we get together and voice shit, and we talk about it. This next meeting is April 22nd, so it's coming up. And you still have time to join if you watch us live. Um, we're going to be talking about the series White Album 2, which I have big opinions on. And mm. I'm very excited to talk oh, about it. Boy. You can find the show on Crunchyroll. And it's not a sequel to anything. You can just watch this one and come join us on April 22nd. It's a Wednesday at like 10 o'clock Eastern. And we have a good time. What kind of anime would it be if Mason didn't have opinions? Oh, but they have a big opinion on this one. <laughs> I got thoughts. We also have My Manga Club, and our next one is April 29th, and we are reading the first two volumes of Complex Age. There's no anime for this one, but I have done a manga minute on it ages ago, and it's about a, um, a group of older adult women who are conflicted with whether or not they think that they too, they are too old to cosplay. So uh, read those and you can join us on April 29th at 10 p.m. EST in the Discord. All you got to do is go to the Manga Club channel, check the pin note there for chapters, and all you got to do is show up and jump into the voice chat that says Manga Club. Very laid back discussion. You're not required to have, I don't know, just... Uh, brilliant <laughs> ideas or anything galaxy brain opinions yeah you don't have to do that it's cool it's very laid back and uh you're not big even required opinions. yeah you don't have to have big opinions mason opinion <laughs> but uh yeah you're not even required to talk so you can just join up and listen if you want yeah um up coming up in this episode we are trying to catch up on reviews because mm-hmm. uh we are a little bit behind so we have a lot of stuff coming up. A lot of a lot of anime talk. We have a review of Stars Align, but we are also doing our first round of impressions. We're doing impressions on Tower of God, Kakushi Goto, Listeners, Wave, Listen to Me, and Tamayomi. Can so, we stop? Can we stop for just a second? I want to make a note on that. No. Okay. Go ahead. So um, <laughs> we are normally about a month slower than we could be reviewing anime after a season ends. So for the next four episodes, I would like to review an anime in addition to doing impressions each each week, which will allow us to cover at least the two, maybe three biggest anime from a season. And by biggest, I mean, like, let's say there's an Attack on Titan or, you know, a, a ReZero type of property that needs to be reviewed. We should be able to cover at least two or maybe three of those immediately after a season ends now before we get into impressions rather than, you know, doing them maybe six to eight weeks after a season is concluded. So that's kind of the goal of doing this. We're going to, we're going to get a little bit, we're, we're going to accelerate our rate of reviewing things by a month by getting these reviews out of the way. So that's the yeah. plan. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, is there anything else before we move on to big news? I'm fucking amped. Oh, let's do it. Let's do it. It's time for big news of the week. So unfortunately, big news of the week is quite sad, but it is the biggest thing that I've seen a lot of people talking about this week. And that is voice actor, Seiyu Keiji Fujiwara has passed away. And um, this, gosh, he is well so well known throughout the anime community for doing so many very beloved, popular characters. But um, Keiji Fujiwara passed away on April 12th. At, um, he was... 55 and he was a cancer patient but um Mm. he originally went on hiatus back in 2016 and he came back to work in 2017 he's been working to my knowledge since then but um he was known for very popular roles including leorio from the 2011 hunter hunter adaptation reno from final fantasy 7 he did both advent children and the remake that reno Uh, he was ACDC in JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, 
um Haynes from attack on titan and maze hughes from full metal alchemist and so much more this guy is was a voice actor for a really long time and he did a lot of really good roles but um following the announcement uh, gosh twitter exploded with condolences mm. and just expressions of how much they love this guy and his work and a lot of say you also went on twitter to express um what it was like working with him how how much they love the guy and they're also to express express their condolences but um yeah it's been a really sad week this one man there are so many clips on twitter of him doing very emotional um roles with leodio and he, gosh he was such a good voice actor yeah yeah like for someone who is able to capture such a goofball like leodio and put so much emotion into him is just oh it was really good and i'm i'm really sad I saw that clip on Twitter of when Leodio sees Golan again at the end. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, yeah. Yeah, I was crying. I was a mess. <laughs> I was like, no. But, yeah. That's why we have the big news. Yeah, it's um, it's always sad when things like this happen. And all yeah. you can, I think I'd prefer, to, but, but, but rather than being, I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of of the mindset of rather than being, um, upset about something in a prolonged way like this. I think I'd rather kind of uh, handle it by celebrating the things that they've done. So if you're a big fan of this guy and you want to just enjoy yeah, the, for sure. the, the work that he's done, just remember all the great roles that he's been in and maybe go uh, watch some Hunter Hunter and, uh, you know, just enjoy the work that he did and remember, remember the good times, you know, and not dwell on the bad times. That's kind of, yeah, he has That's such a well-known voice. I think a lot of those characters, it's going to be really hard to replace him. Mm. But yeah, it's just it's it's sad, but yeah, celebrate the works that he did and go check some of those shows out if you have not seen them. He was a really fantastic voice actor. All right. So up next we have Enzo Senpai's Notice Me Corner. You ready? Are you, are you excited? Yeah. I'm super excited. Oh, he's super excited. Super. super excited. Yeah, Join us in Enzo Senpai's Notice Me Corner. Yo, yo, it's Enzo Senpai's Notice Me Corner where you guys can write in and let us know about stuff you're working on, stuff you've accomplished, stuff you're just proud of, so we can give you a shout out because, like I fucking say every damn episode, we love you, right? We love you. So, this one comes in from Corny, uh, and they say, uh, great news, guys. I finally found a new job, and for the first time in my life, it's not in customer service. It's an admin position in a quiet, bright office, and fingers crossed it'll be quiet enough to give me time to draw comic strips, which has always been my workplace goal. Big thanks to Mitsugi, who helped me improve my, my CV. A curriculum it's vitae. Like a, it's like a resume. Which is, uh, means okay. it's, that's yeah. what I, That's what I thought. Okay. You know, me and an accountant. Haha. <laughs> you know, I, I obviously know these things. Okay. Uh, helped me improve my CV a few months ago. That's probably why I got it. If you don't mind the Oh, plug, shit. Check yeah if you don't mind the plug-in check out my comic strips corny mystic on facebook or instagram arigato okay omedo gozaimasu corny for getting the new job and stuff and i'm glad that you reached out to mitch mitch is extremely knowledgeable when it comes to stuff like resumes so good resource but I'm sure you got it from your own accomplishments, but mm -hmm. a little flair of mitts in there doesn't help. Doesn't well, hurt. yeah, I mean, listen, I was just about to say, you know, um, I might have helped with the resume, but it, that, it takes a lot more than a resume to get you a job. So you 100%. you got you you, you got to put all the credit for for that in your own corner. So I'm happy to help, and that goes for pretty much anybody else as well, by the way. But um, yeah, that's an accomplishment that the, the resume the, all the resume does is is uh, get is get you to have an email written to you mm -hmm. you know that says hey why don't we have an interview everything else is all you so congratulations yeah. i don't know For about sure. that mitts your your suggestion to have a moe character watermark on the resume well, was a bold decision yeah <laughs> but she was a very professional looking moe girl in a suit <laughs> in a suit with a briefcase you know she kn she knows that when you go to a, when, that when you go to an interview having a nice leather folio with resume copies in it mm, Mm. Makes you look good. You want to have a nice mm. press suit, shiny shoes. Mm, yeah, and that. that it's all about those business cards, even if you're not in the business yet. And that Moe girl didn't spill a drop of tea or cake on herself. I will just say. Mm. Mm -hmm. Well, 
if there are other of you listeners and addicts out there that want to write into Enzo Senpai's Notice Me Corner, go to the website aapodcast.com. At the top uh, at the top bar there, you'll see a, a button that says Mill Bags and More. Once you click that, it'll take you to a form where that has a drop down. In that drop down, you can pick the segment you're writing into. If you're writing into this one, you'll see it. You click it, you'll write it. We read it at some point in our lives because, you know, we 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 be slow with this. <laughs> <laughs> we be slow with these things. We, emphasis on we. <laughs> we, 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 we. Um, but yeah thanks so much for writing in i love I, I love this segment especially during the corona time man so, yeah congratulations again and let's get on to some a- new anime releases it's time for a hot new anime releases and again quinn might just falling straight through the ceiling rest in peace hunter um new hockey show for having such a terrible Last third, <laughs> last thirty episodes is just epically bad. Um, so some good, some good stuff here, guys. So I'll start off with the good news, and then we'll get to the the good good news. So another ma- another manhwa is getting an anime adaptation created. The God of High School. I saw a lot of conversation about I this. I, I saw something about that. Yeah. Yeah, this one getting a lot of talk coming out in the summer of 2020. So hey, you're only gonna have to wait like a few months here. So yeah, apparently this from from Line Webtoon, the synopsis, it all began as a fighting tournament to seek out the best fighter among all high school students in Korea. Mori Jean, a Taekwondo specialist and a high school student, soon learns that there's something much greater beneath the stage of the tournament. Whoa. Ooh. Treasure. Zai hole. Maybe. So <laughs> if you're a, if you're a fan of uh, that property, um, the it's a manhwa being it's uh it's gonna be worked on by mappa so hey studio we all love mappa so yeah they've been killing it oh yeah studio map is great and also uh we've been joking about it for a while and i guess now it is official cells at work black getting Mm -hmm. a tv anime in january 2021 so for those of you that want to see all the dark health things that affect our bodies you'll be able to get a chance in this new spinoff, the newbie Red Blood Cell is one. Is this? Is this okay? Is one of 37 trillion working to keep the body running, but something's wrong. Stress hormones keep yelling at her to go faster. The blood vessels are crust are crusted over with cholesterol, ulcers, fatty liver, trouble, da- trouble downstairs. <clears throat> and it's hard for yeah. a cell to keep working when every day is a code black. So you're gonna have like. I don't know, sexually transmitted diseases, yeah. cig- cigarettes. I think, I think there's, yeah, I think there is some on smoking too, yeah. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know, maybe some crack cocaine. No, I, I, don't, I have no idea, but, <laughs> but um, it should be uh, interesting for sure. Definitely worth watching. I'm guessing studio is going to be Linden Films. They are changing studios, I believe, because I yep. think it was uh, uh, David Production David. was season one. They were like, well, we David David Production said, well, we just can't abide by. Crack cocaine. So you're gonna have to find another studio to do. So this is just too black for us. So they moved. They moved on. That's mm-hmm. probably not really what happened, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I can't wait to see what kind of um, strange and bizarre and uh, adult conditions they uh, discuss in cells that work black. So it'll be fun. Looking forward to that for sure. So okay, that's all we have for hot new anime releases. So for trivia on the website at aapodcast.com, you can go to that and scroll down at the very bottom of the page where we have a picture with the theme of anime shrine maidens. If you can guess what it is, you can be our winner for the week, just like Yotaro Vegeta was for correctly identifying the picture from last week as Stein's Gate. Mm. See, I knew you guys could have done it. (laughs) Um, So yeah, go to the main website, check it out and see if you can get this week's entry. Awesome. Yeah. And we also have our in-show trivia question, which we'll answer after our break. And our question is, Kakushi Goto, a story about a mangaka trying to prevent his daughter from finding out what he does for a living, is currently airing this season. The original manga was written by Koji Kumeta. He also designed the characters in an anime about some rambunctious tanuki. What is the name of that anime? If you're paying attention last week, Mason told you. So uh, let's see if you remember. And uh, I remember. See. <laughs> we'll see you after the break. Hey, all you animals. 
Anime Addicts, Mitsugi's here, bringing you your first anime news break, and I'm just going to lead off here with uh, some COVID-19 roundup, we'll call it, as nobody wants to hear this COVID news piecemeal. So, destruction due to COVID in the anime industry, certain scientific railgun anime is delayed due to COVID-19, San Diego Comic-Con canceled due to COVID-19, Food Wars, Shokugeki no Soma delayed, uh, Apare Ranman, PA Works' new property, delayed, Evangelion 3.0 plus 1.0, which is a ridiculously dumb title, delayed, the film is delayed, Card Fight Vanguard Gaiden, delayed, let's see what else, The Millionaire Detective Anime, delayed, Japan expands COVID-19 coronavirus state of emergency nationwide, Hana to Yume, Young Animal, Moe Magazine, rescheduled, and finally, Diary of Our Days, Breakwater anime delayed. Actually, just kidding. Love Me, Love Me Not anime, also delayed. Bubble, Words Bubble, Up Like a Soda Pop film, delayed. Let's see what else do we have on the list here. Anime Expo 2020, canceled due to coronavirus. Hokkaido Prefecture has delayed a second state of emergency in Japan due to COVID-19. The Given anime film is delayed due to COVID-19. And finally, Kinikuman's manga takes a one-month break due to COVID-19. So there is your full COVID-19 roundup for the week. Now, moving on from that, finally, mobile manga subscription service MangaMo is launched. For $5 per month, subscribers will have a limited ad-free access to the MangaMo library of titles in English, which include things like Attack on Titan, Fire, Fire Force, Somali Tomori no Kamisama, Art, and titles of that previously English releases, including Joshin Chan Dropkick and Reset Game. So for those of you that are big fans, you'll be able to experience this new manga subscription service on April 15th via the App Store for iOS devices. So for those of you that are on uh, Android, it does not say if it is also available on Android, but for five bucks a month, you can get to read a lot of manga ad-free. And next up, Crunchyroll has revealed their most watched series for January through March 2020. In other words, quarter one, 2020. And of course, it looks like Isekai and Shonen have dominated the list. Attack on Titan, Black Clover, Boruto, Darling in the Franks, Demon Slayer, Dr. Stone, Food Wars, Haikyuu, Hunter Hunter, Jojo, I guess that's a seinen maybe, uh, Mob Psycho 100, My Hero Academia, Naruto, Naruto Shippuden, One Piece, Radiant, ReZero, That Time I Got Reincarnated as a Slime, The Rising of the Shoot Hero, and Welcome to Demon School, Iruma-kun, all on the top of the list, which probably 90% are shounen or isekai anime. This was Misaki, and this was your anime news break, and now, as we always do, it's time to get back to the podcast. Anime Addicts, the AAA podcast is always trying to bring you new and exciting ways to enjoy our content, and now we have an exclusive member-only RSS feed on the site that is going to let you access our hentai episodes, our hobby addicts, and our after-parties episodes, all from your favorite mobile apps. That's an additional eight episodes of content per month just for you, and you can listen to it through Apple Podcasts app, you can listen to it through Podcast Addicts, Pocket Cast, Overcast FM, Downcast FM, etc., etc., onward and onward. So many mobile apps for you to choose from. If you were holding back on supporting the podcast because you didn't like listening to our extra content through our website, now you can get it and listen to it the same way you enjoy all your other podcasts. So pitch in, help out the podcast, do a good thing, and enjoy all the extra content we have for you. Just go to aaapodcast.com slash join, support the podcast, Merry Christmas, and you will get all this extra content and an exclusive member RSS feed for you to enjoy. That Again, that's aaapodcast.com slash join and support the podcast. Hi, my name is Tony Oliver, voice of RC and Loop on the Third from Loop on the Third, the TV series, and I am an anime addict. <laughs> Hi. 
and I got the answer for that trivia question that Manny read before. So just so you guys, in case you guys forgot, because you're dummies, here's the question again. Uh, Kagushi Goto, a story about a mangaka trying to prevent his daughter from finding out what he does for a living, is airing this season. The original manga was written by Koji Kumeda. He also designed the characters in an anime about some rambunctious Tanuki. What is the name of that anime? Well, the answer is Pump The Eccentric Go. Family. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the Eccentric Family. If you got that right, good job. If you didn't get that right, you gotta watch more anime, my guy. All right. Yeah. What are you even doing here? What are you even doing? What are you, what are you doing? even doing? What are you even doing? You know. All right, but we back. We back. I was muted. Whoops. <laughs> there it is. Okay. I was, I was like, this is where Mandy would speak normally. <laughs> I'm I'm sorry. I was muted. No, I said I had a run in with a with a tanuki yesterday, or maybe it was two days ago. Wow. Eddie Raccoon jump out at me and we had a stare down for a bit. <laughs> Did you win the stare down? No, I walked away. <laughs> <laughs> he, he really wanted food. I was like, I, I'm going to leave before he bites me. Nature wins a game. <laughs> Are we ready for yeah. Mandy's manga minute? Yes. And now, let's take a minute for the Manga Minute with Mandy. This is Mandy's Manga Minute, where I take a minute to tell you about a manga and hope you find something new to read. And this one is called the A Witch's Printing Press. Mika Kamiwa is a young woman who is a magic printer. That is, she helps to create grimoires and other mystic books which witches and wizards can use. However, she cannot use any magic herself. Despite um, desperate to find a spell which can send her back to her home world, Mika decides to create a completely magical market where magicians can trade and show off their creations. So a witch's printing office is a fantasy isekai written by uh, Mochinchi and illustrated by Yashiro Mi Miyama. It is still currently publishing with one volume currently available in English, both digitally and in print. Um, a witch's printing office is just another addition to a very long list of isekai manga. It's um, not without the, some of the same issues that the genre possesses, but it does have its own little unique spin. Uh, the manga doesn't give you any background on the main character, Mika. We don't know anything about her previous life at all, um, only that she is, has been in this fantasy world for about half a year. And she is looking for a spell to return her home, but... Um, has no idea where to even start looking for it. Every person in this world is able to use one spell that is unique to them. And Mika decides that she will bring them all together by creating a fantasy comic kit called Magic Kit. It's really funny to me. But um, sorcerers from all over the world can come to her new convention, show off their spell, and sell them to others by printing them onto scrolls. And uh, she finds that her magic kit mimics the comic kit that she is familiar with in many different ways. Um, I have found a lot to like about this manga. Mika is not an overpowered protagonist. She can't even use spells at all. Um, and seeing her, but seeing her try to manage her convention and come up with new rules for um, to keep everyone safe there and just display um, different kinds of spells is really enjoyable. It's just, I think it's just a shame that um, her being from another world is not necessary to the story at all. And uh, this could have just very easily just been a fantasy series about a magic convention. But um, yeah, it isn't perfect, but I think if you really like fantasy manga, it's worth checking out. I can't read the title of this thing, which is Witch's Printing Office, without thinking of Witch Hat at LEA. You know, I love Witch Hat. I know you do, but like it's very similar. Like, Witch in the title, <laughs> yeah. Office, is the same as the at LEA. Like, it's, it, oh, I just can't not think about it. Even the art is like the, I don't know, I really like the art in this. Even that is kind of somewhat similar. I'm a little bit. There's a lot of detail in the art. I just like it a lot. I don't know. Oh, nice. I kind of want to read some more of it, so we'll see. Yeah. You know what Mason's also thinking about all the time? All the time. Some arguing with people. Some How to cut people down. With people. How to fucking uh, humble them all. Cut them down <laughs> at the knees. Let them know. Let them fucking know. All right. It's time. Well, it's time to get bloody. Ladies and gentlemen. 
Let's get ready to rumble! You know, I wouldn't be thinking about arguing with people. People just had, like, good opinions right off Ooh, the gate. Yeah. Yep, uh, okay. If you think you have an opinion Already starting. <laughs> that will uh, make us clash, go over to the AAA podcast website and then the mailbags drop down. You can uh, tag a post to put in this anime arguments thing. Which Don't be an elitist. We will then uh, talk about. So the first one today comes from Nuclear Burger. And uh, I got to I gotta, gotta give them guts for this one because this is a bold claim. Yeah, uh, this, is right. this is a full spice. Here full it spice. goes. Yeah. Darling the Franks is objectively a 9 out of 10 show. And, uh, well, according to my anime list, it's, uh, it's a 7.42. So, no, it's not. Um, Next question. And if you actually want the full review of the show, you can find it on episode 435, where we go in deep. But essentially, what Nuclear talks about is essentially saying that the themes of the show about coming of age love and individuality are not really unique but they present like a solid story and they're consistent for the whole show and you know the community loves the first half but kind of dislikes the second but they think that it carries through on the conclusion and proposals to the end and that has a great soundtrack opening and ed and they write who doesn't love the idea of robots who run on sex um I mean, and I would agree. The show is full of ideas, like you said, but it is devoid of content. It is like the world itself, despite being a trigger production, is so empty. And it just ping pongs through all these various genres without executing any of them that well. Um, you just get a bunch of like contrived drama between like characters that are just trope after trope after trope. Mm -hmm. And they lack all the charm that like a trigger show usually has. Um, the show is designed to be like palatable for like a lot of different people, but it doesn't have any depth to it. And it's really just copying the playbook of Baron Lagan and Evangelion, but it's so watered down that those metaphors aren't lost, but have no substance. Um, I don't mind a show that doesn't have unique themes. There's not that much to talk about in the world, but if you don't say anything worthwhile with the few themes you have, you've squandered the whole point of a show. Um, I agree that the blowback, to the show in the second half was a little much, but mm -hmm. considering the potential that it had, I understand the disappointment. I will agree though that the sound design and music was very good though. So not a nine out of ten, but it was it was a show. What do you guys think? Um fully agree that it was a show. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that can't be debated. That is objectionable. Oh yeah. I mean um objectively yeah, true. That's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I, I, I'm with you a lot on pretty much. I, I love that you said that it does do a lot of things. It doesn't execute well because the thing, the thing with stories, right? It's either, it's either you take something that's been tried and true and you execute super well and that gives you your edge there, or you do something unique but you still have to execute on the unique stuff, right? I mean, you look at Shonen. Like, when's the last time a super, a 100% unique Shonen has existed? I don't think that's happened for a long time but it's it's a matter of executing the status quo or executing the few ideas that you have that are unique right so i think only the frank like yeah it's a lot of interesting out of the box ideas but pacings off of the show like some characters are just like forgotten about for no reason um and those two things alone do not in my opinion uh earn you a nine out of ten a nine out of ten is a nearly perfect show you know, like a nearly perfect show. A ten out of ten, guys, is a perfect show. We're, don't forget that. It's not you can don't just get in ten out of tens out easily. I mean, this is a studio trigger anime, so it, it automatically can't be. It has to be at least less than a nine out of ten. So oof, oof. That's that's now that's mm. a thing. Right here. A, I would I would argue that a there's a little miss. too much a one, which is kind of might have what drag it down what i'll say that there is no such thing as an objection uh, objective nine out of ten because it's all opinions there is no such mm. thing like lies you can love the anime it can be a nine out of ten for you but it's not going to be for everybody and that's fine and i don't agree that all 10 out of tens have to be perfect 10 out of tens can be something that is True. really emotional for you hit you in the right spot but you are able to see the flaws in it like Hunter Hunter for me. I fucking love it because it gave me so many emotions and I fell in love with the characters. 
I know there's some pacing issues here and there, but I don't care because I love it. For sure. And 100%. You know, it's going to be, everybody's going to be different. So there is no yeah. such thing as an objection, like objective 9 out of 10. It just doesn't exist. Yeah. I've given an emotional 10 out of 10s all day, baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Yeah, I guess we'll we'll do one more quick argument. I think we might have to start pairing these down to just a single oh, argument if it's, if, it's a, if it's a really good one. We'll, we'll see how time it goes. But this is, I think, an interesting one. It comes from user Red Blues, and they wrote an Odyssey that I do appreciate. But I'm going to try to parse it down the best I can. Essentially, their claim is because of the you know the new format of the anime fandom with people watching shows seasonally with all the streaming services and everything that were offered uh they claim that there will never be another quote-unquote classic anime essentially because there are so many shows that come out on a day-to-day -day that there's not going to be another show that will stick in the community's mind as a long-term thing that like in 15 years will be regarded as something that you kind of have to watch to get into the anime medium they make a claim that maybe the last potential contender would be attack on titan but maybe shows like Devil Man Crybaby, Vinland Saga, Mob Psycho, My Hero Academia, etc., aren't going to become classics like they would have if they'd come out, you know, 20 years ago. So I think you can never really see what a classic is when you're in the moment. And I will agree that, yes, because of distribution changes and the new, you know, way that we consume things, that you're not going to be kind of forced to watch the shows that you only have access to like we did back in the day. But I think there's tons of classics coming out today. Absolutely. I think um, Attack on Titan, possibly One Punch Man for kind of the impact it had. Uh, mm -hmm. Your Name, Gurren Lagann, My Hero Academia. I think all of these are going to become mm -hmm. classics to some degree. And, you know, as distribution methods change, what is going to become popular and what's going to grasp the community's involvement is always going to shift but the same way that like music or movies like those landscapes those mediums have changed drastically in how people consume content but we still get classics and i think anime is no different than that so i think there's enough important shows coming out that if anything because there are so many more shows coming out there's so many more good shows that we have to pick from yeah i think the i think that when you define something as a classic you, it needs to survive the test of time and like like you said, like, we're not going to know. Like, we're not going to know really in 15 years what people remember from today. Like, what really is something that people still recommend from today? Uh, we can guess. Like, no, and, no, and my guesses are pretty much aligned with what Mason guessed, too. But it's hard to say. S same deal with music, too. Like, a record could come out right now. And the only record to, in, in my mind in, like, the mainstream is, like, maybe, like, one of Kendrick's rap albums is, gonna, is an instant classic. But, like, it's hard to tell. It needs to stand the test of time. So, but um, I, I for sure think my hero will be like. Yeah, I think my it hero already is. I, I was, just, I thought it was funny that they mentioned my hero specifically, not like he does not thinking that anyone's gonna remember it. And I was like, I was thinking, wow, that's really interesting because if you asked me what el anime relevant right now do you think will be a classic, that would have been the first one I said. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, me too. I think that that would be my guess. Also, of of all the shows, right now, probably yeah. I think it's probably. My I would have said that before Attack on Titan for sure. Yeah, I think so too. Both of them for sure. I think. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. First, I think would be my hero as well. Yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Today, yeah, I don't think my hero is really that good. So. Hmm. Are, are, we, are we past the era of classics? Yes or no? Well, I know, hmm. I, I know, I know. People have shorter. They have shorter attention spans today than ever. At least, especially from I know, I know my attention span is definitely shorter than it was. Um, we're such a fast-moving, um, overwhelming, uh, uh, overwhelmed with uh, information, staring at screens. You know, it's like people are just overwhelmed with the amount of media consumption that you have at your fingertips today, compared to what it was years ago. This is my opinion, but if we are if we are past the point of having. Uh, classics and i think that that's really kind of a tough statement to make because it's very like definitive and overarching to cover everything but you know when you've got you know i feel like back in the day like let's just say like 1998 or whenever cowboy bebop came out for example like uh, i think we all agree cowboy cowboy bebop's a classic but it's like okay back then an anime season might have only have had like 14 shows in it and so everybody watched cowboy bebop 
or everybody watched, you know, all 14 uh, pretty much, dude. Yeah, maybe they watched all 14, but but right. everybody was watching this one show. Everybody remembered it. Nowadays, it's like you got like 55 anime in a season. So the viewership spread a little bit more thin. Um, and then the next season, there's just so much overwhelming information. There's just so much, there's such an overwhelming amount of media that um, whatever was popular five minutes ago may not be remembered, you know, the next week or whatever. So I don't know. I think it's still a little bit difficult to say that definitively there's no more classics. I might, I, you might say, oh, uh, whereas the average season might have had like um, one classic, uh, you know, a decade or two decades ago, maybe you maybe you could say, oh, the average season today has like 0. 0.3 classics in it, you know. For those of you that you know are you know savvy with the with the fractional <laughs> holes, but like, oh, you know what I mean. But like, um, uh, like see for me, like, I, I mean, I don't even know my is my hero even a classic? See, because I don't I think it will be. Because I don't it even will be. Be, because I've seen enough My Hero to say I don't even think that's like a to me that's not even like a top ten shonen show. So well, I not mean, to you, but well, I mean to a lot of people. That's got a lot of people in the anime who would never had an interest in anime. A lot of people who aren't familiar with anime at all know what My Hero is. I mean, there's a difference between a classic and an objection <laughs> objectively ten <laughs> out of ten show. But uh, no, I, 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 there's definitely. Classics. I mean, I can't imagine in 20 years that someone came up to me and said, oh, I want to watch a like a mature, like character driven anime that's kind of realistic and cool. Like, I'm definitely going to be like, oh, yeah, Rocky Go. That was a great show. It's a classic. Check it out. Like, I think that's going to happen boundless. And I think a, a classic is coming out at least every year. And, I'm, al- uh, I'm also not really sure how to define a classic. So... Like, what makes a classic a classic? Is it just the number of people watching it? Because, I mean... You know, I mean, I don't know that that's exactly right. I Is think it, we could ballpark it as a show important to the community in an overarching way. And maybe this is something mm-hmm. we should dive into in a deeper thing, but yeah, probably. I, 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 thought this, I thought both these were good arguments. I appreciate both Nuclear and Red Blues for submitting them. And uh, yeah, s- submit some if you have opinions as well. All right. Yes. All right. And with that, we are going to move on to our main topic for the show which is going to be our first round of spring 2020 impressions uh for people that are listening for the first time ever impressions are when we go through some of the picks that we made at our selection episode and we watch the first three episodes of each of these picks and we decide whether we will keep them to review fully later on once the show completes once the season completes or we will fail them now so that we won't review them on the podcast Uh, we only pass eight shows because that's the best number that fits our podcast format uh, over time. So we're going to do impressions on Tower of God, Kakushi Goto, listeners, Wave Listen to Me, and Tamayomi. Would one of you guys like to go first? I have two of them, so I'll go first. Um, right. Might as well start off with the spice. Oh, by the way, wait a second. Today, we're going to be doing impressions. Oh, yeah. Impression time! Believe it! Believe there we it. go. It's my first yeah. impressions back. I forgot that drop existed. Oh, my God. All right, Tower of God. So this is one of the more heavily watched. What, what is the ranking on this show's viewership? It is show number two. Only one show viewed more than this show, and that would be Kaguya-sama Love is War, and nothing else particularly close. Mm-hmm. So Tower of God, based on a, on a manhwa, however you want to pronounce it, uh, done by Studio Telecom Animation Film, it's a 13 episode show just came out and I'm watching the show. No knowledge of the source material whatsoever. And, um, you know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say that I was a little disappointed by this anime because I think that there was a lot of talk about this show and it was the only show. It was the most, it was the show that I had that I was the most excited about based on the things I'd heard about it prior to watching it. And this show was a huge disappointment, and I think that it is getting way more love than it ought to, and I'll tell you why. So, first of all, um, whether or not this anime is meant to look like the... And I'm watching the clock because I don't want this to get really long. Whether or not this show is meant to look like the manhwa or not, it looks, in my opinion, very uh, subpar. The, the line art is horrendous, and that may be intentional, but it makes everything in the show look like it's half done. Um, not only that, the shading on things is almost non-existent. So it's very, 
it doesn't look good and it doesn't move well either. So the there were some like action shots where like a girl would do, like I read in the first episode there was a girl did like a backflip kick or something and like I, f- I feel like they skipped like a like 14 frames in that motion of her doing like the back like the back somersault. Um, so just getting the art and the animation out of the way, I think the show um, is probably the worst looking show out of the five I've got. So I'm not uh, that that was a bit of a disappointment. Also, I kind of wonder if this anime is something that they have produced with the assumption that people have watched the source material because they flat out just drop you into this situation without it's <laughs> it's yeah, like the manhwa starts the same way. It's like the hi. It's also really confusing. It's like hi. There's this kid named Bam, and he really likes this girl named Rachel because they have some kind of relationship, but we don't know what it is because they haven't told you shit. And then Rachel is going to like rush into this tower, but we don't know what the tower is because they haven't told you anything about it. And then he, then Bam's like, well, I have to go into the tower after Rachel because I can't live without her or something. And my thought was, well, I don't really care because I don't know who you are and I don't know who Rachel is and I don't know who this, I don't know what this tower is all about. And then they just continue and then, so then, then they just like launch into it and then f- for the whole three episodes, there's really not a whole lot of gap filled in there. All, and uh, there's like a couple flashbacks that are like really short and kind of inconsequential and then and then the whole three episodes is just like one little like trial test after another most of which I thought were really kind of uninteresting like uh he, he gets like he gets a black staff weapon from a girl and um she's like a princess and he utilizes this weapon to overcome this first obstacle which is like this giant um, underwater, I'll call it like a water dragon. And he, he, he overcomes this trial by, by, um, confronting this water dragon. And then like immediately he's teleported to this grassy field where an orb in the sky says, hi, you have 20 minutes or whatever to call the number of people in this trial from 400 down to 200. And basically it's like, hi, hunger games, go kill each other. And then that's what they do. And then they just like run around and kill each other. But I'm sitting here like, I don't know who you are, Bam. I don't know why you're here. I don't know what's going on. I don't really care. Like, if Bam had had his head blown off, like, right there in that episode, I would not have cared because I had no buy-in to any of the, anything that was happening in this anime. Then he, then he pairs up with two other people, one of which is a talking, like, alligator on two legs, which is just silly. And then I'm like, well, I don't know who you are, and I don't know why you're here. And then the orb's like, whoa, if you fight after the timer's up, you're automatically disqualified. And then they immediately continue to fight each other, and the orb does nothing. So I'm like, well, okay, we didn't really follow that rule. Then you get into, like, three more trials, and then it's just like, I don't want to call it nonsense, but, like, I, I, don't, I don't understand where the story was in this anime. Um, it has an eight on Mal, and, I'm, and, I, and I can only imagine that that's from people that have, read the, that have read the source material, and they're just rating it because they like the source material. But, like... To me, I'm watching this, and I'm like, I don't understand a goddamn thing that's happening. This anime really needed two episodes of what the fuck is going on, and then to start, and then, and then like, it needed, it needed the the Fate Zero episode zero. You know how they do that in Fate? They needed, they God, they the infamous establishing our God, episode. They needed that so badly in this because I I don't understand what the fuck's going on. I just don't like. All I watched was like uh, was um, a very crappy comparison of Hunter Hunter um, Hunter Exam, where the characters are just getting reduced down drastically every trial. Um, you know, if I had watched Hunter Hunter and they had started right at that episode where the where the fast walking guy with the purple hair was walking and like Gon and Killua were, you know, trying to chase him down, I still would have thought Hunter Hunter was better because one, it looks better and. And Bam, Bam's no gone or killer. I'll tell you that. But Hunter Hunter, it spends three or four episodes making you love Gone. He has the fishing thing right in the beginning where he catches the fish and like that, that's that, 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 that. he's like screaming and he's excited. He catches a huge fish. There's the there's the boat. Ex- they're on the boat and they kind of bond on the boat. And Hunter Hunter takes the time to make you give a fuck about the characters in it. And then when they get to the trial, you love them already and you want to see them succeed and you're bought in a little. This anime doesn't do that, and bam, he's he's not very interesting. So, I don't know who the fuck Rachel is, but you know, she's not very nice. They'll just leave him behind like that, or or maybe she had a reason, but I don't really know. So, but if you get to the top of the tower, you get like whatever wish you want granted to you, and um, 
yeah, I was just lost the whole time I was watching this. I didn't understand anything that was going on at all. Um, and uh, I don't understand how anybody could really see it a different way. Like, I don't know if any of you have watched this, but if you if you've seen if you if you've read the source material and you pretend you haven't, and then you watch it, you're gonna find you don't understand what's going on because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, this is one. I mean, everyone's different. Have, yeah. That's a bold statement. <laughs> this is one of the few ones I haven't I have not tried yet at all, so, and I, I actually haven't heard anything about it aside from the animation being kind of wonky. I feel like I'm kind of doing a no-no here because I feel like people like this show and they're like, oh, it's good and everybody's watching it and it's got an 8 out of 10 and, you know, I feel like it, and there's like 9 million readers of the source material and, and I know it's popular and everybody's watching this, but like, uh, I don't know. I just can't pass it because I, I don't I don't care. Like, I don't, I don't want to watch it. Um, and I don't know how many more episodes I'm going to have to watch before it gets to the point where I understand what's going on. And if it's more than three out of the... 13 episodes it is it's too many so i'm just not going to pass it here and fully expect that it will be coming back when the when, when the listeners vote Boo! 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 yeah getting in on it okay yeah i feel kind of bad but like i just i don't know i felt like i feel like i wasted my time watching this because i don't I took nothing out of it at all. Nothing. So it's understandable, man, for sure. If, if it's that good, the community will, will vote it back. It probably will be yeah. back. I, ima- I I highly imagine it will be. Okay. All right. And if uh, enough stuff gets canceled this season, we might not have enough uh, shows to yeah. fail. We might have to just <laughs> bring it back from the dead. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that uh, too. <laughs> uh, we shall Mason, see. Yours is up next. Do you want to go next? I'll go next. So right. my next one was my number one pick of the mm-hmm. season, which was Kaku Shigoto, which we already mentioned once on this episode today, done by Studio Ajido. And like we said, it's done by my boy Koji Kumeta, who did Sayonara Zetsubo Sensei. Uh, it's streaming over on Funimation or on Anime Lab. Uh, it's a story about Goto Kakushi, which is a, who is a single father and successful manga artist who draws somewhat vulgar manga. And he essentially just tries to hide it from his daughter because he's embarrassed and doesn't want her knowing that that's such a unsocially acceptable job. Um, it's a very enjoyable, relaxing show. It's well executed. It looks solid and distinctive. Um, has the always entertaining Kamiya Hiroshi as the lead voice act- actor with uh, Takashi Rie as an absolutely adorable Hime. Uh, the daughter in the show is so cute. Um, and this show consists of various segments like skets, and essentially it's relating to one of the following things. You either get, you know, a process about general manga creation, you know, meeting with your editors, going from uh, physical to digital drawing, uh, popularity rankings, that whole thing. The other segment is, you know, the, the, the quote unquote plot of the show, which is hiding this occupation from your daughter, which they have set up like detection drills. So if she approaches they can like cover and like pretend like they're doing something else uh trying to level up your stats in the non-manga way like there's a uh, a physical contest essentially and he's like oh well, a manga manga cow would be like really weak so i need to like lift weights and become strong so I, she won't even consider the fact that i'm a monkey stuff like that and finally you just have a general like father daughter S show like think of sweetness and lightning usagi drop uh, or like barakamon for that kind of aesthetic and essentially the show just like jumps between these three facets constantly which is nice because it's fresh and it shakes things up the problem is the show doesn't really get as deep in any of them as i was expecting i love sayonara arts that's sense light and that is a pure comedy and it turns it up to 11 and that's a little abrasive and hard to get into but like it goes so into that concept that it succeeds. This show is much easier to get into. It's a very palatable seven instead of eleven. Essentially, it touches on these things. It makes a funny joke, makes its laugh, but kind of moves on. It's not as all over the place. It's not as dependent on like puns. And it's I think it's a good jumping on point for a lot of people. And it has a little bit like of an undercurrent of a mystery that I'm hoping will pay off. So while this show isn't as extreme as I might've been 
expecting and kind of hoping for it to be. It is nonetheless pleasant. Uh, the ending is super rad. It's a great song. And this is a perfect show to watch weekly, so not very bingeable. But even though I wasn't as hyped after episode one, uh, episode three was still pretty solid, and I'm enjoying it enough to pass it. Nice, dude. Yes! Yeah. Yes! Oh, yeah! Can you feel that, buddy? Huh? 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 Ah. <laughs> Exercise a damn demon. Oh, you want you wanted to hear the whole thing? Oh. No, that's okay. Damn shit. Okay. All, right, all right, next time, next time. Kamiya Hiroshi is still the king of talking quickly. Mm-hmm. And it's it's not that quick, actually. It's just it's more just him shouting in despair as he normally does. But I love Kamiya. Gosh, he, he's such a great person. Everything actor. he does is just so yeah. entertaining. So just for him alone, it's worth passing. I agree. He's one of my favorites. Yeah. So I I'll go next because I'm only doing one today, and my one is an anime I was very excited about. It's the anime Listeners, um, and Listeners is about it's it takes place in a world where um, we have these monsters called the Earless, uh, in a world <laughs> where music's not really a thing, um, and the way these Earless are fought off is by guitar equipment. Like and, and and at the moment, actually, I'm not even sure if it's always guitar equipment, but it is like it's it's equipment, like music equipment. So far, it's only been guitar equipment that transforms that transform into mechs. Yeah, oh yeah, that's a real sentence I just said. It's guitar mm-hmm. equipment that transform into mechs to fight the earless off, right? Um, so with this premise, me being a guitar player for a long time, I was just like, well, fuck, I have to. I have to watch this. I have to. It's like it would be illegal if I didn't watch it. You know what I'm saying? So, all right. I turn on episode one. And episode one turned out to be a very, very standard episode one for a show, for the, for like this tone of a show. Basically, episode one establishes the main character, Echo. Echo Wreck, which is a, a silly name, but his name is Echo Wreck. Um, Did you and, say Pickle Rick? No, Echo Wreck. <laughs> Oh, I know, I know. <laughs> it, it hits the same notes in the mouth, too, though. Pickle Rick and Echo Rick is the same shit. Um, but yeah, so an Echo lives in Liverston. Liverston? Liverchester? I forget what it's. I think, I think Liverchester? It's, yeah, I think it's the city is called like Liverchester. It's just really funny to me. Yeah, it's, it just, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot of puns on like <laughs> the real world. So it's weird. But um, so in this town, this town was the site of a great uh like catastrophic event where the or a lot of the a lot of the world the a lot of the the people that have these mechs called players all these players were, were, were gonna throw a huge concert in this town a concert so crazy good that it was gonna banish all the earless once and for all but that concert went to shit because one of the main most powerful players jimmy <laughs> jimmy stone free <laughs> Jimmy Stone Free. Jimmy spelled J I M I because he's cool. What is this yeah. JoJo shit? Yeah, I don't <laughs> What's know. What's going Jimmy, on? Jimmy Stone Free decided to not participate, or he turned his back. Uh, we don't know why or, or why or how yet, but he decided not to participate. And his his departure was enough of a lack of power that the festival went array, and so earless roamed the world still. <laughs> and what what happened was that this town, Liverchester. Uh, ended up being a huge scrap scrapyard type of a town. So Echo, being a being someone who's a fan of players that lives in this town, he ended up building his own equipment from all these scrap parts from 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 the huge scrapyard and everything. Hey, well, thank you, Mason. <laughs> <laughs> That's that was neat. <laughs> um, but. And in in doing so, one day Echo is digging through some some um, some scraps, and he finds this girl laying there, and she has a, a necklace, and on that necklace is the final piece he needs to make this equipment come to life. Um, so he takes he he brings her because she's this girl's like passed out unconscious. He takes her to him and his sister's house, and oh, oh wait, hold on here, boys. Okay. Uh oh, anyway. what happened? I don't know. My computer started freaking out. But anyway. oh no. Yeah. No, we're good. We're good. We back. But, Was it um, just yeah. us? I don't know. Y'all, <laughs> y'all just messed up my computer's vibe. 
but um yeah so he takes her back and then she wakes up she has no idea who the heck she is she has no idea where she came from nothing doesn't remember anything and then echo's like hey like you got this thing on your neck blah 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 and she's like oh yeah a player i don't know what the fuck that is cool 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 and then of course of course cue the earless attack on a town that hasn't been attacked in a long time so the earless show up and um and then you know echo and this girl who he names mew mu mew like because of the little sound uh you know they i don't even do this him is wild it's but yeah so this she puts the thing in the amp and the amp becomes a fucking robot which is crazy <laughs> i don't know and then the robot um smacks the shit out of the earless in this town and then for you know logically they decide to run away from the town together and start their journey to find her memories and um learn more about the players and learn more about the earless and stuff in this world okay here is my conclusion on this fucking show okay i'm already confused i have no idea what just happened i like the music in the show a lot the old piece of bop the the soundtrack of the of the show is primarily comprised of guitar licks and guitar sounds really moody really 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 like fitting guitar for every type of emotion in the show um the idea of the equipment and players is really cheesy but i think there's potential in it i think i could i think there's potential to see some really cool things the animation is really solid outside of the mechs the mechs are like very not perfect cg but serviceable serviceable animation on, on the robots um the fucking guitar amp max jesus christ um <laughs> and um but the biggest drawback for me on the show so far is where the story is going um episode one through three do an okay job of setting up motivations for the character and they do an, they do an okay job at setting up the world and the overarching theme of of what is going on with everything but it's not super great yet um or i don't even know if i know enough to say yeah it's not super great right now the the biggest reason i'm still in and bought in is because of the idea of the show the flair that it has the aesthetics that it has the, the, the music and the story is barely presented which could go one or two ways right one it could be a symptom of only having three episodes this one's slated i think for listeners this one was later for twelve. While, while you look it up, the uh, the chat was kind of came to the conclusion: Is this like Fooly Cooly meets Eureka Seven? Um, so that is the very, 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 very common uh, combination of that I hear on the internet when people okay. describe the show. Um, it has the energy of it has the the musical overtones of Fooly Cooly for sure. Like like the pillows, like the the ba- the pillows of the band that plays on Fooly Cooly. Um, that kind of vibe is what the music in this show is. Um, I think Eureka 7 has a more fleshed out story from the beginning, but I can totally see that. I can totally, yeah. like, I think it is a, it, I think it is a good in the middle of those two anime. It's not as chaotic as Fooly Cooly, and it's not as, like, big, big brain fantasy shit with mechs going on. Um, right now, it's a very small brain. <laughs> very small brain anime but i do <laughs> like it enough and so again three episodes slated for 12 i'm gonna take a chance on this one i'm gonna hope that the story gets it together because everything else so far is good enough for me like it is good enough i like the the idea of this show i've never seen a show like this and i don't get many music anime or music adjacent anime to really talk about all the time so i'm gonna take a chance here I'm going to pass listeners um, with the hopes, for fuck's sake, that this does not turn out to be a cheesy, draggy, pace issue storyline with fucking guitar amp robots. Ooh, that's a bingo! (laughs) Yeah, that's a fucking bingo. I think if they played guitars to, like, control the mechs, then you'd be completely in. Oh, I would be way more in than I am now for sure. But I'm in. I'm I'm like I got like my left leg in with like my right foot in. You know what I'm saying? Does that make sense at all? That's like, how you do the hokey pokey. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm hokey poking into this for 
for sure. But yeah, that's li- that's listeners for now. All righty. Well, mine that I'm doing today is Wave Listen to Me. And uh, this was a manga adaptation. I did the manga for Manga Minute a while ago. And uh, I really enjoyed what I read of the manga. I didn't get too far into it. I just did the first couple books for minute but um it is being adapted by studio sunrise um i don't know if the director has done anything the director is tatsuma uh, minamikawa and uh i don't think yeah i don't see anything on here that i really recognize except for like the fairy tale movie too <laughs> but um yeah and this one is currently on Funimation, so that's where you can watch it and wave listen to me is a um an anime about this woman, this older woman. I say older, but you know, she's she's not like our typical high school girl, <laughs> anime girl. She's I think twenty eight or close to thirty. I I know she's like in her late twenties, and um, she is she just broke up with one of her um with her boyfriend, and it was a really tough. Uh, breakup and instead of dwelling on it she just goes out and gets flat out drunk just (laughs) drunk off her ass and then like the way i just love her i love minare as a character because instead of dwelling on things or getting sad she just gets angry at everything she gets so mad and uh she ends up being pulled into a radio station by this guy that she met at a bar so she is in a drunken rant on the air about her breakup with her boyfriend. And then she ends up doing, um, later on, she ends up doing a set of like um, answering mailbag questions, which are like, um, am I the asshole type questions? And she's just ranting about each and every one of them. And the guy on the radio station loves it. He's like, this is, this is fantastic. People are going to love this because she is just so angry but she's also able to like even though she's drunk off her ass able to speak so well she never stumbles Mm -hmm. over her words and she just lets it all fly out and she's criticizing everybody in these mailbags she's criticizing her ex-boyfriend at the end of the rant she goes if uh, she calls out her boyfriend on the air and says if i ever see you i'm gonna hunt you down to the ends of the earth i'm going to kill you on the air and it was just and then she wakes up the next day at work like what the fuck happened? And then she hears herself on the air and she gets so mad at that. And she goes down to the radio station and is like, I'm going to uh, let them have it. But somehow she ends up getting a job there instead. And man, Minare is such a fantastic character that we Mm -hmm. hardly ever get. She is a very outspoken woman, very bold. She is just, instead of, you know, she just gets angry when, and when there's something going on, instead of, you know dwelling on it or getting embarrassed or something she speaks her mind and she gets mad and that's what i love about her Ugh, this man she makes the entire show for me <laughs> and i'm having a lot of fun with this show um yeah so far it's about her just uh working in this radio station she, gets, she does get fired from her job mm-hmm. <laughs> and so now she has to work here and uh yeah trying to work it out on the radio and she's just I don't know. It's a really interesting show about um, just her finding a new passion and being able to just speak her mind. And also her trying to discover emotions that, um, or try to uh, kind of find emotions that she has, that she struggles with. Like there's one moment where she's trying to force herself to cry to get that emotion, but she acts like she goes into it watching ghosts, but she pulls out the wrong movie and watches ghost ship <laughs> at the end of it, because she doesn't really understand like the, the crying emotion at the end. She's like, Oh, that was really sad. But it was kind of gory. You mean, <laughs> wait, really wait, you mean me. ghost with uh like the old romance movie where they got with like the pottery she, scene. She went to watch that, but she got ghost ship instead accidentally. <laughs> she, at the end, she's like, Oh yeah, I guess that was sad, but really gory. <laughs> it is really funny to me, but um, yeah, no, I'm having a lot of fun with it. And uh, the only problems that I have is that the eyeballs are really weird. We talked about this yeah. this week Weird. the eyeballs i don't know there's like this big gray circle on them is shading and it's bugging me but it's not enough for me to go oh i can't watch this anymore it's just really weird <laughs> but um yeah no i'm i'm going to pass this because i'm really enjoying it and i can't wait yes. to see 
what else happens? Um, I've watched all three episodes. There are some moments where I'm like, mm, that was a joke that didn't really land with me. <laughs> but I mean, overall, I think she's fantastic. And I'm just so excited to have a protagonist like her. Pretty good. It's pretty, 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 pretty good. I'm go. so stoked you passed that, Mandy, because <laughs> I'm having a blast with that anime, too. Same. Super good. <laughs> All right. One more to go here, and that is Tama Yomi, which, was, is, a, which is a baseball anime directed by Toshi Nori Fukushima, who directed most of the another baseball anime that most people probably know, which is called Major, which is probably like, you know, it, definitely the most famous uh, baseball anime and maybe probably one of the most famous sports anime ever considering the manga but um there you have it so one might think that the man knows how to direct a baseball show we'll, so we'll find out so Are, uh, four straight passes in a row wow man i don't know if it's ever happened before so the um so it's done by studio a cat not not a cat <gasps> my not cat did not like literally a cat, oh. but like a hyphen cat, which has done, Mandy's let's see, cat, Mandy's cat did it. most popular things they've done, frame arm girls. That's pretty much mm. it. That's about it. So let's get into it here. So this is the story of a girl named Yomi who <clears throat> played baseball when she was in, I guess, middle school, I guess it is. But she has this pitch that is... Uh, completely unrealistic, but it's like um, this weird pitch where she calls it the magic throw, which is very um, creative. And, you know, it's basically like like a... It's... um, I don't know. It's like a... It's like a... It's, it's kind of like a curveball, but uh, it's almost like a pitch that goes up towards the batter, like it's going to whack them right in the face. And then, like, out of nowhere, it just, like, decides, oh, an 80-mile-an-hour wind blew, and then it just, like, cuts straight down to the down to like the outer <laughs> the outer part of the plate um so the batter is probably expecting it to hit them and then ultimately it cuts down at an angle that makes it hard to hit but the pitch but the catcher that she has at her old school can't catch it because it's i don't know unconventional or something so she can't catch it's it OP. And so um, it causes a lot of problems because, you know, when the when the catcher can't catch the ball and it's like bouncing around around behind home plate, you know, runners steal bases and, you know, bad shit happens. So ultimately it costs them like their success in middle school. Well, she gets into, um, I guess, high school and she, there's another girl at this school. They have no baseball team, but there's this girl at the school that happens to be able to catch the pitch so she can catch it. And... Um, more or less the whole first three episodes of this anime is gradually like one girl after another shows up at this school to play baseball um, with them because you know they don't have a team but they're all out there like playing every day there's a baseball field I, I guess it's the boys team and the girls don't have one so they're kind of like on the field and the girls like oh look a girl a girl's playing back so they just like accumulate these girls and by the end of the third episode they just happen to have nine people which is just happens to be the number you more or less need to play baseball and um they're pretty good. Like there's a gr there's there's good hitters on the team. The catcher is good. Um, you know they've got enough people that are adept at various. Like they don't suck. Like there was a baseball anime with the girls like a season or two ago where like they were just awful. Like the whole first three episodes was like I don't know how to play. Like how do you even throw a ball? And I was like oh my god. Um, but this is like not like that. So the girls are actually um, like. I feel like if they if they ever play to if they ever do get around to playing baseball for real in this anime, they're gonna be pretty good at it. That's kind of the problem with the anime is that they don't actually fucking play baseball. They just like practice and they don't really do anything. So um, it's like I don't know where this show's gonna go because it's a twelve episode show and they've wasted a third of it now or a fourth of it rather with just like accumulating the players. So is like the ultimate apex of the show gonna be? We had a spot. We had a scrimmage. Like maybe that's the end. Like I don't know. Like they have these flashbacks of the girls going to like Koshien or whatever. Which I don't even know if girls go to Koshien in Japan, but Koshien. But I don't think they do. But but um, uh, if I mean they're pretty friggin' far from that, you know. So unless this is going to be like a hundred episodes long with like seven seasons, um, they're never going to get around to it. 
So, I mean, this show wasn't terrible. It was kind of boring because not a lot happens. It's mostly um, girls, like, ogling over this pitch, and um, this new girl shows up, and, you know, she has this specific talent that makes her good at, at doing one specific thing in baseball. Like, oh, there's a shortstop. Oh, we needed one of those. And, oh, this girl can play outfield, and great. You know, and they're all pretty good. But um, ultimately, they don't really do any actual playing of baseball. Um so, you know, I passed this because I was excited because I'm a sucker for sports anime and I was excited because of the director. Um, and, I, and I've been waiting to see a modern baseball anime with girls that actually play baseball and, like, are good at it as opposed to shows where girls are trying to justify their ability to even be participating in the sport or learning how to throw a ball. I'd rather just have girls play baseball because um, I think that's a lot more appealing. But... Uh, I can't really say this is that because like they didn't really play baseball in the first three episodes, so um gonna have to fail this one too. I uh, I actually thought I actually I don't know if I'd say it was better than Tower of God. I enjoyed it more than that one. Uh, mostly Which I, show I, looked I, better? Oh, for sure the baseball show looks better. Oh wow! <laughs> I mean, at least they at least they have line art. At, at least they have shading on their faces that you know. Like I mean, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna get go back into that, but. Um, but I wouldn't say it moved that well either, though. It's not like it's some marvel of anime. It's not some, it's not, we're not talking Studio Ghibli here. So, um, so, um, but yeah, not passing Tom Yomi. I mean, I feel like if they just had, a, I feel like if they just like in the third episode, if they just played a, played a practice game with, a, with other girls at another team, at another school, then it was like a good, compelling episode of like playing. I might have passed it, but, like, for God's sake, you know, eventually you have to actually play some baseball and not just, you know, you know, um, just talk about how your fingers have blisters or some shit. So, <sighs> failing this one as well. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the, I don't know what the hell Toshinori Fukushima is doing. Maybe he has little control, but like, but like, bro. <laughs> I mean, I mean, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, that's really interesting to me because considering he's major, like, wow. Yeah. I mean, was this a original work? Um, it doesn't have any so. source. Of, well, here adaptation okay. of. No, nah, it's a it's a manga. Okay. It's, okay. Yeah, I mean, if you go to a if you go to a Kokuichi Bon Curry shop in Japan and look at the wall of manga, there, you're gonna see something like 130 volumes of, of major, <laughs> along with Hajime no Ippo. So I figured, you know, hmm, but whatever. Fair but enough. Well, with that, yeah, that does round one of our impressions. We've passed Kakushigoto listeners and Wave Listen to Me. So look forward Solid. to reviews of those in the future. Uh, we have another in-show trivia question for our second break and that is stars aligned was directed by kazuke akane he also directed a popular isekai movie in the year 2000 what is the name of this movie we'll find out in just a couple minutes stay tuned Anime Addicts Mitsuki is back, and I'm bringing you another round of anime news, this time COVID-free. So it looks like due to people working from home, there are some pretty fun activities going on for Zoom meetings, including Evangelion, Ghibli, and Shonen Jump all releasing background art to be used on video calls. Shiro Bako gets in there with some shots from different bars where the characters would drink, and also even the little jail cell that they locked the director in during the anime in order to get him to do his work. Attack on Titan, there's lots of different shots, including the room where they have sort of the Ava Unit 1 fixed in his uh, concrete prison, or whatever the hell you want to call it, with just his head sticking up. And they also have some shots from different properties, including from Street Fighter. You can stand in front of Street Fighter and so many other places. So pretty interesting if you're a fan of anime and you want to spice up your Zoom meetings, you can grab them online. 
Next up, Pokemon Sword and Shield are announced the winners at Famitsu Dengeki's Game Awards for 2019 Game of the Year. It did win Game of the Year, and it also won RPG of the Year, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Other winners not giving their categories, Death Stranding, Nosia, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Final Fantasy XIV, Shadowbringers, The Shadows Die Twice, Sekiro, uh, other titles including Persona 5, The Royal, Dragon Quest Walk, and Ring Fit Adventure, all winning awards in the Famitsu 2019 Game Awards. Next up, Kadokawa is listing the 12th volume of Psychic, Psychic Detective Yakumo, otherwise known as Shinbei Tante Yakumo, which is a novel series that got an anime release some years ago, and as I recall, it wasn't all that good. It looks like it's going to be ending with its 12th volume, so the novel is going to be shipping on June 25th, and Kadokawa announced on April 14th that the novel is going to be delayed from its original release date of May 29th for quote, various reasons, and I think we all know what that means. And um, so if you're a fan of Psychic Detective Yakumo, enjoy this last novel coming out in June, the 12th volume. Lastly and finally, this is some pretty happy news here, I would say. It looks like some more information has been released about the Netflix live-action adaptation of Cowboy Bebop. It had been delayed previously because of an accident that had befallen the main character of the show. However, it looks like they have announced that they're working on notes and calls for a season two script. So it looks like they're going to be working on season two of this property. And it looks like also there have been some teasers that have been alluding to the fact that Yoko Kano is also going to be involved in the work uh, for the property. So you're going to get perhaps some Yoko Kano music in the series and also a possible season two as they are currently working on notes. And uh, if you're a big fan of Cowboy Bebop, look out for that when season one does air sometimes coming up. This was Mitsugi, and this was your anime news break. And now, as we do, Anime Addicts, time to get back to the podcast right now. Hey, Anime Addicts, JList and JBox.com are a great place for you to buy all of the awesome treats and snacks that you find in Japan, including so many unique flavors of Japanese Kit Kats, which you can choose from. We all know that Japan is famous for having tons of different Kit Kats, and JList and JBox.com have an awful lot of these to choose from at only about $4.50 per bag, including flavors like sake flavor, umeshu, nuts and cranberry flavor, rum and raisin, the famous and probably the most popular flavor, green tea, Yokohama Strawberry and Mount Fuji Strawberry, the Hiroshima Momiji flavor, Amao Premium Strawberry, Benny Emo, Purple Sweet Potato flavor. Head over to JList and JBox.com right now. And while you're there, you can browse their selection of anime figures, games, and other anime and game-related merchandise straight from Japan. Hi, this is Tiffany Grant. Remember me, Asuka, Asuka Langley saw you. Anyway, I'm a total anime addict, and if you're not listening to Anime Addicts Anonymous, what are you, stupid? You know me? Of course! Welcome back to the podcast. Before we left you, we had an in-show trivia question. Stars Align was directed by Kazuke Akane. He also directed a popular isekai movie in the year 2000. What is the name of this movie? And the answer is Escaflone, A Girl in Gaia, which is, um, in my opinion, uh, Supremely, uh, vastly superior, vastly inferior compared to the anime. But that aside, all right. Did everybody have a nice break? Get a nice little yeah. water. Get a little water. Have a little. Have a little tinkle. 
A little reset action. No, I'm, I'm sure Enzo just mowed down like 20 Oreos. Oh, Bruh. shit. <laughs> Bruh. He had them Bruh. lined up. He just pushed them into his mouth one after the other. Yeah. So I was cutting yesterday. <laughs> so I'm cutting again, right? And um, it's amazing how much water you drop when you start cutting. It's just like f crazy. You lose like four pounds of water in like three days. And um, I guess carbs make you hold water. And so, boy, boy, we made that we made that cheat day yesterday count. Well, let's see. Kicking off with three original cream-filled donuts from Krispy Kreme. Mm -hmm. uh, Wait, cream filled at Krispy Kreme, brother. They 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 now inject the icing that goes on the outside inside the donuts. And I'm telling wow. you what, if you take that home and stick that baby in the oven for about one minute on 350, oh god, you bite it and the and the glaze just 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 falls out. I mean, it's unbelievable. You mean um, the microwave for the oven? Why would you put it in the oven? It would take way more time to because the microwave ruins everything. So the but the oven will keep wrong. the the oven will keep the outside intact, while while warming up the inside and the outside. The microwave will just turn the whole thing into like soft goo. Um, and then a half, I a half a Pizza Hut Big Dipper box, which is fantastic. It's like it's like a pizza cut into breadsticks. And then to top it all off, my point, almost a dozen Soul House chocolate chip cookies from my man Enzo. Mmm. Very nice. And now we're back at it. Now we're back at it. I so. uh, I had some curry last night. Oh, you know, I, I was I I made it and I was eating it while we were doing our watch party. And almost every show we watched that night had curry in it. <laughs> Dr. Chigoto, oh. Waveless, and the Me had it. I was just like, I'm in my element. I, I was I was, Jen, I was I were, you were aligned. Ooh, with hell yeah, the nice. You were watching. Japan, Japanese oh, curry is just the flavor. It's so flavorful. It's so delicious. All right. Well, shall we get to our five star review? Mm -hmm. We shall. Yeah. It's time for iTunes review. Malphine is on the Gilliam Five Star Starship. Whatever the hell the, mm -hmm. the outlaw star. Yep. Sure, dude. <laughs> if you would like to leave us a five star review, please go over to iTunes and uh, go to the AAA podcast and drop us a review. Let us know how you think that we are doing. Please, if you also have criticisms, let us know so we know how to change and make things better for you. But this five star review is from Kaiman Destroyer of Worlds, which well, I love that name. Uh, what an honor, Kaiman. <laughs> yeah, it's great. <laughs> this podcast has truly made my addiction worse. I listen to the show on my commutes at school, mowing the yard, and even at work. The only time I'm not listening to it is when I'm watching anime. <laughs> Good. <laughs> that would be really confusing. <laughs> After enjoying it so much, I went ahead and became a subscriber, and I could not be any happier. My favorite part of the show is the hobby addicts portion, where I get to learn more about video games and try out to try out and about what the guests are up to. I, re I recently listened to a Hobby Addicts episode where Mandy <laughs> tells us that she has cystic fibrosis. As a respiratory therapist and a diehard anime addict, this personal connection made me love the podcast Aww. even more. Hell yeah. Please keep Aww. up the great work. Lifetime listener for sure. Thank you. Thank you so much, Kevin. I My respiratory therapist just retired. So, hey, if you want to help me, come save my life. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, come through. We'll pull up. No, I, I do have a new one, and I will, because I loved her. But thank awesome. you so much, Kaivin. Yeah, we Kevin, appreciate I... your uh, your support, and uh, hopefully, you find more video games through me, and you don't spend too much money on them. <laughs> or do because or do, do. <laughs> or do because we do too. That's true. <laughs> It'd be like that sometimes. It'd Love you. Like Mwah. Thanks for writing in, Kaivin. Um, so with that. Uh, Kaiman's great words. We are moving on to our main topic, which is the. I want that to be a drop. Oh, okay. Uh, which is our review of Stars Align. Uh, Stars Align is an anime. I think it was me, right? I passed uh -huh. this forever ago. Holy! Let's shit. have a look here at, at uh, Icy I Rose's so. fantastic document. Yeah, yeah, so... I'm, I'm pretty sure it was me. Um, I think this was right before my eternal hiatus. It was. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Episode four. Episode four ninety six. Right. Yeah. Oh, that's so long ago. Yeah. So, it, I passed the show, and I remember it being for the reasons that um, it is a sport anime, con uh, uh, you know, surrounding itself 
with I mean, con- concerning itself with soft tennis, and it is directed by Kazuki Akane from Studio 8-Bit. Uh, you can watch it on Funimation, Hulu, Amazon, and it is it was it was a watch and i'm actually really excited to talk with you guys about it so um just to give you guys a quick synopsis of the main themes of the show before going to spoilers the show is about soft tennis so there is a school um where blah, 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 blah. guys how come how come mal always loads like shit when i'm trying to use it how mm. much, why is that because they don't pay why enough money that? for their servers probably why why are they trolling me huh why are they trolling me? Tra la 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 Actually, no, you've joined the any list life. I have, but I had Mal open and I hit refresh like a dummy. And now, okay, <laughs> now, done okay. Goofed. I done goofed, but now, okay, it loaded, it loaded. But yeah, so um, it, it sounds, it's about soft tennis, and we are with the main character, one of the main characters called Toma Shinjo, and he is the, he's the captain of the soft tennis team, which at the moment is at risk of being disbanded due to lack of achievements the student president of the school <sighs> which is which i think is a pretty cool character personally oh yeah um yeah i think she's, i think the student council president is pretty cool however she is a she is a bit of a hard ass and she wants results from her clubs and this club in the moment does not produce results so toma the captain of the team has a friend maki who he wants to reach out to to be like, hey, dude, help us out. I know it's not your thing, like, but but my, I remember my brother said that you should play, whatever. Listen, I'll even pay you. I'll even play. I'll, I'll even pay you to play. Just play with us. I, I'm sure with with someone like you, we can do better. And Maki says yes. So from that point on is when the show is where the show develops. So before we get into uh, the crazy spoiler section, uh, I do want to know my fellow co-hosts like what did you guys expect going into the show i can go first if you guys want but if anyone wants to go first let me know um, um go ahead mason I'll, I'll go i think we'll be in the same boat so i went in completely blind i mean it's an original work from a relatively new studio so not a lot of expectations they only had done at this point uh the slime isekai and they would actually go on to do the uh budokan if my favorite idol went to budokan i would die which mm. didn't exist yet but I, those are both pretty good enough shows. So really had no expectations going in. Um, when I watched the first three episodes back when Enzo passed this, I was a big fan. The the harshness, both of like the main character and the way he pushes his team to improve. But like we just talked about, the, the quote-unquote villain student council president, they both had like, they really helped elevate the show into like a sense of like reality and believability that I was really engaged with. So I was going into the full watch of this with big expectations. Mm-hmm. Um, Miss, do you want to go? Yeah, so um, I didn't know much about this show other than that it was apparently cut short, so there was a lot of talk about that well well before I watched it. So I, I didn't expect all that much because, you know, it's kind of hard to have your hopes up when you hear something like that. But, you know, I knew it was a sports anime, so... You know, I'm normally down for a sports anime. As usual, I don't really have any uh, information about the. I guess is, is this a, is this an original show or is this based on a manga? Original. Yeah. So, at least I'm on equal playing field on, on, on an equal playing field there for once. But yeah, I didn't really know much about it other than that and that it was a sports show. So. Cool. Man, um, with it being an original, I didn't know have any. I didn't have any like source material behind it to have really high expectations but i did watch it i watched this as it was airing and um within the first couple episodes i fell in love with it i thought man it was interesting because it felt like a very different kind of sports drama show it didn't have um like the sports side of it was very typical but i like the addition of some really heavy hitting heavy hitting drama i thought that was interesting and what drew drew me into it and also there was um it felt like it had a lot to say on support for the lgbtq plus um community so i was excited for that as well and i was really um i had really high hopes for it yeah i'm i'm with Mandy there too because i so within the first three episodes i already got a I already had a good sense of how this show was going to differ than most 
sport anime that have a a, a leading cast that's full of boys of men um these the boys depicted in this show are from the get-go like realistically emotional which is nice it, they're not like overly emotional they're not like corny emotional they're not like they're not like parodies of emotion like they're all like they all have their they're all they're all like willing to express their feelings and that's interesting to see from a shonen anime because most of the time shonen fall into a i don't want to say machismo because that's that's a whole different thing but like a a strand of that kind of vibe where like you know men have to be manly men for for them to be boys right so but these guys the way they talk to the characters the way they talk to each other in the first three episodes um and also it was really refreshing and also the i, I really like the, the the piano sounds in the show a lot the music was really interesting for me so pat post three after the first three when i passed the show i also had you know higher than normal expectations for a show because i was really impressed by the first three so I, I want to go ahead, go ahead and give my spoiler free recommendation before we move on, and I'll let you guys give yours. I think I would recommend this. I would do recommend this anime. I truly do. Um, I think it, it's a, it's an anime that balances all. I, and, it, and again, it's with a grain of salt because uh, if you guys look up the situation for this anime, mm-hmm. it was it was slated to be double its length. Um, it got cut short, and even with that getting cut short, I think the ending isn't disappointing it's not disappointing in my opinion it's just like fuck i wish there was more yeah. um so and, and that's how i felt I was like oh shit that's crazy I, w- I wish there was more i wish it was this wasn't canceled but all in all they still handled the story well i think the pacing was good it, it balances a lot of shit there's a lot of stuff going through these characters mind they're dealing with they each deal with a lot of things very deep somewhat somewhat dark and also dark things in their lives, and yet the and and yet the sport of soft tennis is still pivotal, and these characters are growing with each episode, and it's it's a, it's a it's a really nice story of camaraderie and how camaraderie can help you overcome your demons. Uh, so I do recommend this show for almost anyone that's willing to try. That's willing to try it. I think anyone that wants an anime that's that has characters growing and it's character driven, I would recommend this one. It's, it's I think it's solid. Uh, I can go next. So this is not a fluffy sports show. Despite revolving around a sports tennis club, this is a show full of emotional and physical trauma. I mean, we're talking abuse, gender identity, cyberbullying, helicopter parenting, just overall failure on so many levels of parenting. Um, It goes into like what's normal, what's socially respectable and allowed, what dreams and passions and pursuits are valid, which ones aren't. Um. Who do you turn to when the people who are there, who are supposed to support you, the ones closest to you, are failing you? Um, It's a very unsettling show because you know something miserable is always right around the corner and you're just waiting for it to happen. And it's kind of an unnerving, heavy watch. And if you are in the emotional state to deal with a show like this, I would say it's definitely worth watching. It makes you reflect on your own relationships and it helps you empathize with watching people who are going through very real real world situations and for that experience the show is definitely a good watch uh, if you want hype sakuga inspirational quote-unquote sports anime experiences uh, this show will not deliver on that so i think as long as your expectations are tempered going in uh it's worth watching and i would agree with enzo that despite being slashed in half of, of its length during the production I was expecting an ending that just kind of was so sudden and lurching and you're like, what? But it it actually worked well enough. And I think if we can get more later, I will be ecstatic. So that's my thoughts. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, Yeah, I think it's really important to to recognize that the anime was so far in production to the point where they said, hey, we're going to cut this, only make it 12. But it had been planned for 24. And he was like, I, I instead, I, I appreciated that instead of him going, well, let's rewrite the last couple of episodes and just come up with a spontaneous ending. He's like, no, I'm just going to leave it as I meant it. And 
maybe I'll get to be able to bring up the show again later on. And I thought that was great. I really appreciated that instead of coming up with some weird ending where we were never going to know if it was going to come back because right. I loved this show. I thought it was fantastic. And um, I, the ending is very unfortunate, but I love that it was just this um, constant juxtaposition between like a very happy, fluffy tennis club and very real dark issues at with family at home and um is it realistic that all of these characters are going through these like in just that one tennis club no it's not but <laughs> the issues that they do go through are very real issues that do happen and i mean i don't know it's yeah of course it's not realistic that they all happen that they're all happening in this tiny little club but i don't know there are some things in there i think people will probably um resonate with for some people and um I also really enjoyed and really appreciated the parts with um, some of the characters when they go over like LGBTQ plus um, issues. And uh, it's, it's interesting because they're not saying it as like a, oh, we have to just kind of shoehorn up some political statement in here. No, the way that they make it, well, the way they talk about it, it's very realistic. And uh, it's a, you know, it, they made it feel very real and about these struggles that some of these kids are going through. And and it was just so positive and god i love that so yeah the tennis side of it if this was just a sports anime it would have been boring <laughs> but i really enjoyed the drama parts of it at the home and all of what these kids are going through so um yeah i definitely recommend it because i strongly believe that if you if you really enjoyed it but you're upset by the ending and you write it off then you are letting the people who decided to cut it get away with it instead of if showing support for something um that then you show them that hey no you're wrong we do want more of this anime so hopefully that'll bring it back or help bring it back at least so yeah i definitely think you should check it out all right that's what you got i enjoyed watching uh stars align the it was a pretty quick watch for me i think i pounded through it pretty fast that was like a day or two and um i enjoyed watching it um however i don't think i'd recommend it to very many people i think that it's hard for me to recommend an anime that ends in such a horrific place and you're gonna find out what, what i'm talking about in about five minutes um it doesn't just end like <laughs> it's not like oh season one ended and then you know we, we, we kind of ended in a good spot like no you ended in like the worst possible spot ever so yeah, wouldn't really recommend it. Um, I'm not really into watching anime for uh, unbelievably heavy-handed social problems. Like I, I, I sympathize and understand that these are important issues, but like, for God's sake, like it's just I don't know. Every character in this anime has some like horrendously traumatic, tough to watch thing happening to them, and it's just, it's just I don't know. I mean, um, I think that people have a tough time uh, if you're not into if you're not watching anime to um, to I don't know, what is the word, see the, the the dark side of some problems in parenting and in, for children. Um, I, there's just not much there for you. I mean, really. Um, it's important to have awareness of these issues, um, but unless you're specifically aiming for that, I don't think you're really going to enjoy it because some of them are pretty intense, uh, and it just comes one hit after another. So in, in some ways, you'd probably say the anime is more about that than it is about soft tennis. So... <clears throat> Um, but just based on the fact that it ends like that, I, I, I can't really recommend it. But I didn't wa I did enjoy watching Soft Tennis, which I um, didn't even know really existed until now. I actually looked at it. I was like, Soft Tennis really a sport? And sure enough, it is a sport. It does exist. They play it professionally. Mm -hmm. So it was fun to watch it. You know, I liked it. For, I liked it for the sports aspect. And um, they the, the kids in it worked hard. And uh, it paid off, and uh, I think, it, and we'll get to more of that later. But yeah, I think that there's just like, I don't know. There's, I wouldn't recommend it unless people were trying to cope with certain things in their personal lives, and they needed to have an outlet for that. Otherwise, no, not really. Okay. You want to move on to spoilers? Yeah. So now that we all gave our spoiler freeze, let's move on to spoilers. So if you don't spoilers want to know these things, coming. oh my god. Okay, so usually in the spoiler section, we like to tackle like the story slash characters first. Um, and there's a lot to say for both those things, I think, in this anime. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll tackle characters generally first. I think 
I think what Mandy and Mitch are alluding to are is right. I think it is the most unrealistic thing to me about this show is that all of these issues are in, are each with one of these characters all belonging to the same small club in the middle of fucking nowhere. Um, well, it's not the middle of fucking nowhere, but in like the same club. It's, that, that's unlikely just statistically that every single person has a, that deep of an issue um, that's plaguing their lives. But given given what we were given which is that situation i think the show um does it in a way where it is not super emotionally exhausting to go through the show um i was talking to i was talking about a show in the hobby addicts called kidding with jim carrey and Mm -hmm. that show deals with a lot of dark stuff too and i was saying but the beautiful thing about that show um is that it's even though it's dark themes you're not you don't you're not like dragged down to that dark place and made to sit there for forever and it's exhausting to be there uh, i think it's similar here in stars line i think the, i think the characters are all treated pretty equally in the show which is hard to do which means that the writing was foundationally solid in my opinion and even though all of them all these issues that they tackle are pretty deep um it still is very much balanced out with really nice underdog success stories as the team progresses in soft tennis so like for every i think for every moment that you're like holy shit that sucks dude is an is followed by joyous moments of this team like winning something like getting better having a having a nice day out eating meat and cooking together and just like falling more into that camaraderie where you're just like Oh, I'm so glad that these people have this for them because otherwise mm-hmm. I'd be so sad for them, you know. So like, um, so I think that's why I think I think that's why the show doesn't get the that that rep where it's like, holy fuck, this is so sad and extremely depressing the whole time because it does a really good job of like making you care about these characters so that when they are succeeding, you're just like, it's like it's like that feeling of high when you see the team in high queue win, you're just like, fuck yeah, those are my fucking boys. So like I, <laughs> I, I, and I felt that sometimes. I was like, "That's my fucking boys at the on the court, and they won. I feel so good for them, and you feel even better for them, I, in my opinion, because of the shit they're going through." That's my so, Sukishima. Exactly. I, that's my Sukishima. <laughs> I, I think I disagree. Okay, I think okay. I disagree. I agree with almost all your points. I think that you know you become really invested in these characters and having them be there for each other like this become their sort of family and their community is essential to why you cheer for them both individually and as a group as a club as an organization Mm -hmm. um in episode four there's a a bunch of motifs where they keep on being called grasshoppers and at the end of the episode it ends with them like jumping around and going in a circle and i had the biggest smile on my face i'm like this was so well done i this this was great this was so nice but this show despite them trying to balance the tough emotional situations with the light tennis the fluffiness uh i didn't think it balanced i every episode was just a i was Downer. just emotionally drained i i felt uh, like okay. me as too good as, as good as the sports stuff was i just knew something bad was right around the corner and they usually like had a whole episode of niceness and then after the ending, they decided to drop in like the jerk character that just ruined everything and just made me. And I always knew it was coming, and I just I couldn't relax. I couldn't untense myself <laughs> knowing that it was coming, and it was a difficult watch. Like this, honestly, a hundred percent honest, this was a harder watch for me than Blade of the Immortal. Yeah, was, like I, you yeah, got bamboozled. It was a horror. I, I, can I agree with you? Can I ask a question? Because I'm. I don't understand the intention of the show because there, like, there are lots of shows that have you know terrible social pri- issues in them, you know, abusive parents, and this isn't the first one, right? No, not at all. <clears throat> but you, but listen, but like, I mean, this is an honest question because I fully empathize. I, I, I empathize. I sympathize. Whatever the word is, you know, no one's gonna watch this and say, "Oh, these aren't serious issues," because they certainly are. Um, <clears throat> now, but you can communicate the social issues that they're obviously trying to get at with one person. You don't have to have four or five consecutive episodes of parent of, of fathers p- 
punching their children downstairs and breaking their bones, women pouring boiling waters on babies. Uh, it's very heavy-handed, and I don't understand why every character... Why, why, I really think you can make the message with one person. You don't have to have it happen to six or f- five or six people. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm sitting there wondering, like, wh- I'm like, is this a tennis show or is this is this a show about uh, um, like social issues? Is this is it both? Is it uh, what are we getting at here? Um, and I just I don't know what the aim of the show was. I liked the show. I enjoyed it. I watched it very quickly. It wasn't hard for me to watch it at all. I wasn't bored at all. But like. As, as, as Mason said, the fact that they just smother you with this, um, I think that it's, it's, it's possible to bring awareness to these important issues without crushing the viewer repeatedly over and over again. And I wonder wh- what the directorial choice is behind it. So, I mean, I kind of I got it, you know, the first time. So I wonder why we needed the third, fourth, fifth, and fifth time. I'd say it's probably more about f- found family. Like, because none of these, well, not, not all of them, they weren't it wasn't every single kid on the team yeah, but a lot of them almost don't have a home i mean like they have a home but their home is not a family so it's more about them building a family together as sure a team so i could definitely see how that or if it's just one kid then i don't know but, it's not but, as but as can't of a message. but but can't one kid find a home on a team like oh i don't have a home yeah. and like you know but oh i don't about, know i don't know I don't know. I, I mean, I, it's tough. Go yeah, ahead, Enzo. I, I I know I know what you're saying. It's because like the message for each of these kids is innately the same message, right? Like they like the the message is like things can be really rough in your situation, but through the power of like found family, like Manny's saying, you can gain the strength, the love, the confidence to overcome it, or like to change to change it, to escape it, to overcome it, whatever. You can't do that with like one character, two characters, or whatever. But <laughs> that's that rice, man. That's that. That's that bread from before. Don't die, man. Don't die, bro. But um, but I, but I think I, I think it's just I think maybe the tennis club is a club full of mis full of misfits and outcasts because and because each of them have a common thread, which is like, shit sucks. You know, shit really sucks for each of these kids. So maybe that's why, at the end of the day, they all kind of, like, find this club to be the one they go to, even though they're not good at it. Like, these kids no. suck oh at my gosh. tennis. I love I that the in the beginning. Off, yeah, out. They're <laughs> fucking whack. They're so bad at soft tennis. Oh, they get the better. Show. They get so much better. But, I love the beginning of the show. Yeah, but um, but to touch on some, like, some of, of the sequence here, so the the tennis team like i mentioned in the spoiler free section is trash they're not winning anything they mm-hmm. barely know how to play the game um and it's 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 a good and it's a good mechanic that they use the girls team as a contrast because the girls team kicks ass mm-hmm. like, they yeah. fucking dominate all day and and when they and when the two scream each other the boys team look like fucking chickens with their head cut off yeah so um so you know, and, and but you know, now that I'm thinking about it, maybe it's because these kids all, and you know, without voicing it to each other, they all kind of see that same darkness from each of them, and maybe they feel camaraderie through that, and that's why they're together. So like, it could be because of that, Miss. But I, why did they, did they need to give each an issue? I don't know because because the editor of the fucking show was like, we need to spice this up to so give them each a problem. The I think Isle they, of Misfit Boys. I think they gave each an issue because there's a lot of issues to talk about, and it, right. you yeah. know, it, it pulls the viewer in with the same like you feel like the characters do, where you're just overwhelmed, you just you feel cruddy about it, and you're like, God, I just want to, uh, and you just have that same frustration. So I can see both parts, but I agree that there was just too much, and I think that each individual situation was presented really well, like by. Like, if they were each standalone things, I'd be like, yeah, this is well fleshed out and everything. They were all well done. It just was hard to give each the attention it deserved after so many back to back to back. Hmm. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I will say that is definitely, definitely a flaw because even though each of them got enough time to, like, to develop so you care, maybe there wasn't enough time to breathe in between, um, in between each of those moments. Us, um, can I just say that yeah, Toma is Toma is the shit? Toma's great. I yeah, love I loved it yeah. when he when he laid into uh, Maki's father. 
That was fucking awesome. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I awesome. and I that loved was a it. A little, a little much though. And I loved <laughs> it when he nice. when he lit his mother up. I loved it. I thought it was realistic for a kid though. Like he's so overwhelmed with emotions that that is the thing that he would say, is like, no, if you're gonna if you're gonna don't touch Maki, I'm gonna kill you. That's the kind of thing like a little teenager would say. <laughs> True, but it's also not the healthiest. When he's like, "I'm gonna kill you," or actually, "How about I kill you?" And then Maki's like, "I ha how about I kill you?" And then how about episode twelve? He goes to the dude's house. Spoilers. <laughs> Once the last time. Here we go. Last chance. D d arrives at his father's house with a knife that he bought from a convenience store. Uh, smash cut to the whack. ending. <laughs> yeah, smash cut to maybe we'll see you again. Maybe. Maybe not the healthiest representation of how to deal with it, but infuriating yeah. and realistic and dramatic enough that. I guess. I mean, I was more okay with that than, honestly, my biggest, like, problem with the show was the almost cartoonish, like, rival characters. Oh, like, yeah. The show was so rooted in, like, trying to have some semblance of, like, realism to it, and I liked it. But then they go to, like, the rival schools, and you have, like, this pompous, like, character, like, if you lose, I'm going to punch you in the face, as he gets massages from the underclass <laughs> during the matches. I'm like... You're, you're losing points here. You're losing yeah. points. Or the other guy who's like super popular, he loses one game. He's like, oh, I'm really? gonna try a new sport. And it's like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I I um my biggest gripe with characters was um it's and it's funny because Maki, even though he is my favorite of the show because he has so much positive energy around him. Like Maki is a kid that when I was in in early middle school, like if I. I knew people like Maki. I wasn't of someone like Maki. Maki is someone who is set in his mindset. He's open-minded. He has perspective. He's willing to listen. He's willing to lift as he 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 wants to lift as he climbs. Right, as long as he as long as he thinks a person he's helping lift is a good person. And when I was younger, I aspired to be a person like Maki, and I've tried to live my life in a way where I am someone like Maki now. Where like I want to be open. I want to invite people to community. I want to form that kind of relationship with people and help people succeed right but the thing about maki in the show is also what was my least favorite thing about the show is that he's just super good at soft tennis for no for reason no re like for no reason like he yeah. well he's better than they are he's better than they are but mandy he goes <laughs> no he is go to toe to toe go to toe, toe with the fucking national champs after like one week after three months <laughs> of playing total yeah, Come which on. which is why I don't really think this is a sports anime. I really don't. Like I, no, I, I, yeah. I mean, these kids could have just as easily been like a basket weaving club, like sitting under a tree singing like you know, like songs from the seventies or whatever, and it would have been the same thing, the same exact uh, uh, sort of. They would have accomplished the same thing with that, because because uh, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I mean, well, no, I, I, I know what you're saying. I, I think it would be a sport. I mean, it does give, it does dedicate a lot of screen time to the sport. It strikes me very similar to the ping pong esque thing of sports. Yes, where yeah. it's not about the sport. It's about how the sport becomes a vassal for characters to grow and learn about yeah. themselves. And like, mm -hmm. if you watch, mm -hmm. yes, there's a lot of time of them playing tennis, but there's very little match choreography. Like, it's a lot of, sh like, just shots of characters making contact with the ball and that's it like mm -hmm. you don't really see the flow of the game you don't see how oh this character is moving and that changes the baseline stance and the formation changes and this is how they scored their points there's no like intricacies like that it's a lot yeah. of literal back and forth of just random shots just to say hey they're playing a sport we don't really care about the details there's no like game and ship to it i i'm still waiting for a compelling depiction of tennis and anime I've seen an awful lot of tennis anime. I don't think any of them have been particularly compelling uh, as far as like watching watching a sport like as a spectator. Um, I feel like that. A lot, I feel like that about a lot of sports. I feel like um, it's been done with basketball and baseball, and that's about it. Like I feel like most of the other sports shows just don't hit the mark when in terms when it comes to being a spectator of the sport. And I feel like this is the same. And I feel like it's. It's unfortunate, but, but but there's a reason why I think when you're watching tennis on TV, they show like the behind the there you're you're like the camera's like way up and behind them, looking at both sides at once, and you just kind of watch them go back and forth, because you can't really tell what the hell's going on unless you can see them both at once. And as, as Mason said, watching like contact shots of them hitting the ball, you know, two two thousand times doesn't really make for compelling sports viewership because you don't really get a sense of the of the dynamics that are unfolding. 
So I don't know. I, I it might just be like a an innate thing in the sport of tennis. Maybe it's just difficult to to um like to to show it in a compelling way. I don't know. Right. Yeah, like they were able to do it when they were like showing their new like partnerships when they like made new pairings. They kind of got into like oh because of their play styles, this is kind of right. how they move. But it really didn't go anywhere from that. Yeah, which is fine. I didn't come to this for the tennis. So. I still enjoyed watching the tennis in it. I was I was into it as yeah. a tennis show. I don't really think it. I don't think it is really a sports anime, really. But I um I enjoyed watching the sport in it. Like I I uh, I think the sports is sec is a secondary feature of the show. But I executed well. But I liked watching it. You know, I was right. when they when they got down to the um. I kind of, I, I kind of wish at the end of the show they had made it a little more gripping as to whether or not the club was going to get disbanded because as their as their you know as Maki and Toma are like getting ready to play as the last hope so to speak of the club you know they as I recall they they win pretty easily and then they they keep winning but like they win pretty easily and there wasn't a whole lot of drama there as to holy shit the club's going to get disbanded you know it was kind of like they you know they didn't have That's much true, actually. they didn't have much trouble um, so. Yeah, so for context, guys, um, in the th there's a tournament that caps the season, and the club is required to win just one game. Correct. They have to win. They have to win one match to keep the club together. Um, so you're right. I think now looking back, I do kind of wish that there was more drama to winning that first game. Uh, about the, but then again, I feel like maybe it didn't happen that way because twelve episodes, and they needed to fit. They wanted to end it somewhere better. Not sure. Well, I think it was intended um, to be longer, right? So yeah. I don't yeah. know. I don't know why they chose to do it like that, but they probably just chose. They had. They probably had to choose the storyline they wanted to go with more so. And yeah, probably that's it, again. It just sucks that this shit got cut in half like that. But um. Okay, um my, so we ahead, sorry, we had we talked a lot about the drama of it but there are also a lot of really good just happy scenes in here as well that i really enjoyed and i thought we should probably touch on probably the more positive part sure of the story. let's so do like, that maki's mom is just the absolute best oh, she's, she's great. so sweet and maki is a good son and man i just loved their um th like the family relationship between maki and his mother and how hard he's trying to uh support his mother and even though and like she knows that he's working himself too hard and leaves him money and is like she's wants him to go out and be a kid but monkey's a little bit too adult for her and i just love i don't know i just love that their he's a good family kid. relationship um i also love there's this one like i love the the silly scenes with um what's his, what's his name subasa subasa with uh yeah. in one of the games where he's like i'm just gonna be loud as shit to <laughs> <laughs> to like distract the opponent he's just yelling i just thought that was hilarious and it was such a good like moment to make me laugh coming yeah, Subasa off of like and shingo they were both yeah this is yelling oh by the way people you can't do that you would absolutely get yelled no. at and you but it was very funny <laughs> But I thought that was really cute. I like. I really liked how the how when Maki came in, they they had to rework the team to so that they worked better together. They're like, you guys are in too many clicks here. We have to shake it up so we can all actually be friends and come closer together. I thought that was really good. I liked um, Arashi, yeah, who's too, from a man. different team. He's like a cocky asshole, and then I love that he comes in and becomes like friends with them. He uh, just comes to their like, like cookout yeah, and stuff. Team. And he yeah, just gets bribed team. with noodles nonstop. Yeah. <laughs> he was cute. And I have to mention Yuta because I and I loved Yuta and I loved all the scenes where Yuta is struggling with his own gender identity and he's looking up books on it and he mm -hmm. he starts talking to Maki. He's like, I don't know, am I this or this or this? And Maki's like, you know what? You don't have to have a certain label put on you. It's just you are just you. And I don't know, I just love the message behind it. And yeah, yeah it was just, I don't know. Those, those yeah. scenes were so fantastic to me. And there were so many with so many of the characters. I was like, oh, that was really cute. And that was really real. And that was just nice. Yeah, super agree on the Yuta part. Because you, you, you unfortunately, you want to, if you had to make a bet, like most anime would make it a really dramatic, like, yeah. I don't mm -hmm. know what I am. Oh my God. Which is, you know, not to say that doesn't happen. There are definitely people that are struggling that that hard with it. But I, I tend to like 
when shows tackle really difficult issues and try to make it try to show people the possibility of it being a very normal conversation yeah they normalized it a lot in the show it was was great exactly like this little this scene literally happens in yuda's bedroom because they're trying to they're trying to go undercover to get info on an opponent they're 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 gonna go play um i think i think well i think that's when this happens but either way it's in yuda's bedroom and it's just like yeah dude i'm not really sure what i am you know i've been thinking about it been looking it up not really sure and maki's just like well it doesn't matter bro yeah you know, you, do like, you need a label. Mm-hmm. Like, do you need to know? Like, do you need to? You do you need to know? No. It's one of those things mm-hmm. where a lot of anime have like the LGBTQ plus representation, but it's just kind of almost feels like a check mark. Like, ah, it's yeah. what the kids mm-hmm. are into these days. Let's let's throw a character in there. G- great, Th- thank you. But like, this was actually done well on top of it, so it's not just hitting the mark, but succeeding beyond what yeah. was expected. So I for sure. Can we talk about the um, ending? Yeah, I was gonna say. Yeah. I was gonna say. My, I was gonna. I was gonna <laughs> Back say, to like, the negativity. My, yeah. My, well, final, I mean... my final point about the ending is okay. So, Maki is the son of a divorced husband and wife. He lives with his mother, who is a sweetheart, amazing woman. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like amazing lady. Like you love her. Like the show makes you like her for this reason. I'm about to say is because the father's an alcoholic piece of shit. Yeah. Um, and to the point where he comes over to their apartment when the mom's not home and he knows Maki's home um, to go in, steal their, some of their, steal, if not all their savings, well, some of their savings, if not all their savings, and also beat the shit out of Maki. And then goes home to his shitty apartment to be a shithole for the rest of the day. So that's Maki's situation where his mother is still mentally abused, he is physically abused, and, they, and they're losing the money that they work, they, his mother works hard for, that he works hard for. Um, so they give that to us at the beginning of the show. They give it to us a little bit around the middle of the show. Um, and then at the end of the show, after the boys after the boys lose to the champions, but made it to like the third round or whatever, which is completely fucking unexpected. So they're celebrating, they're super happy. Maki comes home. His mother isn't there, but um his I think his like quote unquote uncle is there, like his like his mother's friend is there and all you see is a ripped em- a ripped money envelope on the table and the uncle's like Maki uh I don't know if and then it's so with the content of the show you can tell that the husband came over probably you know abused the mother and took the money. I think she Maki- was in the hospital. I think yeah. didn't he say she's in the hospital? Oh they did, okay. I okay. think so. I- I, I assumed it was the hospital. I guess I just missed it when they said it was the hospital. But the mother's in the hospital because you can assume the father abused, took the money. So Maki resolves. And this is the final scene of the, the final scene here. Maki we cut to Maki entering a grocery store or a department store. He purchases a big kitchen knife. He resolves to going to the father's apartment. He's outside the father's door. He unpacks the open knife. Fade to black. I believe that's how it goes, right? So, and that's where the that's where the season ends on this cliff, this fucking huge cliffhanger. However, and I think people are fifty fifty on it. People are just like, "Holy shit, no fucking way! How could you do this to us? Like, this is so unfair to end it here. Like, we don't even know if we're gonna get more of this. What the fuck?" But I think it's an incredible job. My opinion here, I think it's an incredible job by the writing to have so many things. You have like equal parts res- resolved in the show, and you have equal parts still open. But the things that still are still open to me are okay. I feel okay with most of the things that are still open, and I'm okay with a season one ending with a cliffhanger when we have the director very vocally trying to bring it back. Um, because again, we could have ended up with a read the manga ending, but there's no manga, so I would have been shitty as fuck, right? Um, so at least, w- at least while knowing that the director is like, no, I want this to come back. I'm trying to bring this back. I ha- I am okay with this cliffhanger ending because so many things that were very forefront were resolved, and then this backup, this like secondary now once again main issue was brought to the forefront, and uh, and it ends with the cliffhanger about where that's going. So how how did you guys feel about how they ended the first season? Well, he 100% won't do it. I mean, there's no doubt. There's, there's no way. He won't do it. So, but, um, I mean, real unfortunate. 
I mean, that's like that's like having a team shooting the buzzer beater three pointer to to win or not win the championship, and then fading to black as the ball hits the front of the rim and bounces straight up. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? You, so you hate to see it. You know, I think this is a show I can recommend to people, provided it gets a second season. And but I'm not gonna send people down that that down that uh down that you know that ride if they're if if they're never gonna get to the end of the ride. So mm-hmm. um yeah, but I mean it's I know that they end, that I don't I don't think they intended to stop it there at all. So it's not that shocking mm-hmm. that it just ended okay. right there. I mean it's not their fault. Um, do we know why it was canceled, so to speak? I mean. There have been a lot of talks about it. Some people said, oh, that the company or the, um, their, um, not, not studio, but their, um, what is it? Not producer. <laughs> what is the word I'm like looking for? Publisher? Publisher was like, uh, yeah, whoever was distributing it was like, you, this isn't going to sell, so let's cut it. And that this doesn't need 24 episodes. Um, there was also a lot of like the animation was really good at parts. It was like there was a lot of um, rotoscoping. So I don't know if maybe that had something to do with it. I don't know. Yeah. So I do want to bring up, though I don't think this has anything to do with how it ended. But this was the show where there was a little bit of controversy at the beginning when the the dance sequences and oh, the yeah, right. I mm-hmm. forgot. Yeah. Uh, were potentially. Uh, modeled or inspired by uh, vines. Oh, they were straight up. Something. They were straight up traced. Yeah, but <laughs> I, I think they, you know, clarified and apologized and yeah, reach out to those people. So I don't think that had anything to do with it. I just want to. I feel like there's been lots of just production things that have popped up and around the show. But like Mandy said, I think, you know, despite not being a huge fan of the choreography of the matches, the the show looked consistent mm-hmm. from front to back. So, thought it looked good. Yeah. Do you have any notes on how you felt on the the ending, Mason? Or I think, I, well, Maddie, did you touch upon your notes for the ending? I didn't mind it where it ended. I mean, yeah, it's a because it ends in such a dark place. We were like, oh shit. Well, what's going to happen now? I mean, obviously, we can assume that nothing that dramatic is going to happen <laughs> if it does pick back up. But it is really sad because you're like, well, shit. What a weird place to end it on. But it's not their fault and i appreciate that he went you know what i'm not gonna make up a bullshit ending i'm just gonna stop it right where it was going to be at 12 episode 12 and just maybe i'll get to bring it back so i don't know i it's it's unfortunate but um you know that's what you gotta do what you gotta do (laughs) yeah i mean it's happened to other shows it's kind of an extra unfortunate that this is a original property because it's like oh space brothers yeah. ended, ended like randomly at episode 99 and everybody's and i was like what gangsta the f- I was like, what the fuck yeah exactly but at least space brothers i think has the manga that goes past so mm-hmm. Elite always had oh, that but yeah yeah but um yeah this one doesn't so yeah and gangsta also had a manga that you could fall back on after that company went bankrupt <laughs> <laughs> and had to end so and a man globe or whatever that was so yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah yeah. yeah yeah so so mason did you have thoughts on the ending <sighs> not really it was mainly kind of like i was expecting almost a worse ending based on what i had heard going into it and i didn't think an ending was needed to uh for the show to tell me to get its point across i feel like it got the message before then so the the plot of the ending which is unresolved i didn't need to feel the point of it mm-hmm. so I'm I'm actually fine with it, and mm-hmm. I think my score will reflect that. If you want to go into that, yeah. So I, yeah, and I can I, and I can go first on the uh, sure on the go scoring ahead. stuff here. Yeah. So to touch on art, I think in line with the rest of my hosts, like I think it's solid and consistent. It doesn't really drop to a place where I'm like, what the fuck, what the hell is that? It doesn't go to a place where I'm like, wow, it's fucking Sasuke. You know, like it doesn't go there, <laughs> but it does it does maintain a really smooth quality to it i think the colors they chose were really fitting for the mood of the show um music wise i love the piano staccato that they use to during during the action scenes during the sports scenes uh i think the op and the ed are really nice just like nice things to listen to 
Um, and the sound of the ball hitting the hitting the rackets was pretty satisfying every time. Just like oh, what the, that thwacking sound was pretty good. A thwacking. That thwacking sound. Um, but yeah, but and then so all those things were pretty solid for me. You know, not super perfect, not nothing to write home about, but solid. I think the story unfortunate that it got cut in half but i i was in for the whole ride i was engaged i was there i wanted to, i wanted to press next i wanted to go to the next episode when it ended the way it ended i was like holy shit oh my god no fucking way and that's testament to me wanting to know more like i wanted more that that those like holy shit wasn't because i was mad it was because fuck i knew me i can't watch more what the hell um so because of all those things it's it i think these days it's hard for me to to want to hit that next button on an episode so bad, uh, and this show made me made me go there despite um, the uh, despite knowing that it was going to at that end because of the situation behind it. So I I'm gonna give this um, four Maki's noodle dishes out of five um, because <laughs> I really I really believe that should this have gotten its fair 24 episodes um, or at least more time to wrap to wrap a bit a, a secondary theme off i think it would have done a good job because it did a good job with the 12 episodes it had so that's that's what i mean also i just enjoyed it i just really enjoyed the damn show so you like those noodle dishes i fucking love those i'm noodles. getting hungry <laughs> what was it okinawan okinawan noodle? fried noodles or whatever yeah something like that Damn, I, i'm hungry I enjoyed Stars Align, um, and then at the same time, I didn't enjoy it. Um, there were time, like there were there were sections where I was totally engrossed, and the episodes fly by super quick. You know, there's some anime where I watch like, and I'm like, oh god, this episode's so friggin' long, and I check in it like I check the check in the time every like three minutes. I'm like, it's never ending. Um, cr- I think Cram would have used the word interminable, but this anime was not that. So I, there were times when like the episode would just fly by and be like, whoa, how'd that, like, where did it go? Where'd that 25 minutes go? Um, and then there'd be moments where I'm just like, why are they doing this to me? Why do I have to watch this over and over? Um, and by that, I mean like all of just like the depressing stuff. Um, so um, I, but overall I enjoyed it. You know, I think the ending is unfortunate. So tough to give an anime without an ending more than uh, uh, three double faults out of five. Three double faults. Oh no! <laughs> well, there were about three of them in the show total. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, you're not wrong. Um, I most agree with Mitz. Um, this was somehow a very easy watch and a difficult emotional watch at the same time. Um, definitely succeeded in making me evaluate, reflect on my own life experiences. Um, there's a weird disconnect sometimes between the realism and the overly dramatic parts, but overall, I think the show hit its mark most of the time. Um, in college, I was a coach slash manager slash captain of a club team myself, and some of like the logistics and trying to guide that really hit home with me. Um, I think if I was more bothered by the ending, um, I would have I don't know, felt more let down by the show, but even knowing the circumstances, I I was I was okay kind of where it left off. So it looked good. It relied on the opening a little bit too much during the matches, but all in all, I I can't fault the show too much. I'm gonna give it three and a half big visor hat energy out of five. <laughs> big visor hat energy. Big yeah. visor hat energy, boys. Yeah, I I really enjoyed this show, and um, at the end of it, I wanted I was really I was honestly very disappointed by it be of it being cut off, and it's not the show's fault. It wasn't their fault that this happened. It's the unfortunate way that the industry works, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So I I was very disappointed by that. I think me being disappointed is um, shows how much I was really enjoying it. I really liked the, I don't know, it just felt different and unique for me. It liked the constant juxtaposition between these kids who are having a, are having a very goofy time in their club, but also the dramatic parts of their family experiences at home. And I don't know, that, for that, it, like, yeah, it got really dark, but it felt different for me. Something that a lot of other sports anime haven't done. And um, I think, yeah, I, I, I regularly liked the way that it looked. I think 
the character designs are a bit generic. I think that was disappointing for me is that I just wanted some more um, interesting looking character designs where I'm like, if you show me a character, I can immediately know exactly what franchise it's from. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah overall i really enjoyed my time with it and i really wanted more of it and um I'm trying to think of a i'm trying to think of, of a thing i don't know what what number or what make thing it good it. i go i'm trying to think. <laughs> while you solve for time i i want to mention that yes this feeling of like freshness and uniqueness is something i definitely am drawn to anime for and this show had that Agreed. I'm gonna give it four screaming subasas out of five, which is insane. Very. I actually like I was enjoying this so much that I was going to give it a higher score, and that's actually me dropping it after uh, just a few hiccups in there here and there. <laughs> so it's mm-hmm. such a high score, and but yeah, I, I just I was loving it so much. If we can eventually get a second season of the show and have all these characters that we all I think really like start to like rise above these problems. Mm-hmm. Uh, that that's going to be such an uplifting, like oh, emotionally yeah. positive season that I will be a, behind it a hundred percent. So yeah, please make it happen. People watch it so it gets more popular. Please mm-hmm. bring back Stars Align. All right. Well, so what did the what did the listeners say? Man, the listener score was all over the place. Yeah, very, <laughs> every very score, yeah. every score, every number had voters behind it. So fifteen point eight percent said five. 52.6 said 4, 15.8 said a 3, 5.3 said a 2, and 10.5 said a 1. And so the average after all of that is a 3.5. And oh. uh, we got a few comments on there, mostly that it was a very interesting student dynamic with adult issues, and uh, mostly the biggest complaint was the ending for a lot of people. So, <laughs> yeah, unfortunate. All right. But yeah. We're at the end of the show. No, I'm so sad. Thanks for listening, guys. This was a fun one. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And uh, fun. we'll be back next week with more impressions and a review on what? Um, uh, it's... Uh, Babylon, is it? Next oh. week it's a Babylonian? On, next week on the Babylon. website, we have uh, Galactic Heroes listed. Galactic oh, okay. Heroes, Babylon week after, and then Shihaya through season three. Galactic Heroes. Baby Lon. some Yang people. Oh, <laughs> Not excited. Oh, yeah. oh, big side. Best boy, best boy. Yang Wenli's coming up. <laughs> Alrighty, guys. Thank you so much for listening. One day we will get to the mailbags, we promise. Eventually. But you can also find us at aapodcast.com slash join. Join us. Get bonus content. Go to iTunes. Please, you know, let us know what you think. You can give us some five-star reviews. If you think we deserve it, also Facebook groups and just yeah, have a great week. Please stay safe and we love you. Stay Bye safe, guys. Bye. After yeah, after party. Peace out. Mwah. See you later.